welcome everybody to episode 176. Let's shift on over. Shift on over. <laughs> shift on over. <laughs> so uh, we've got a jam-packed show for you today, guys. Uh, of course, um, welcome everybody to the China Show. Welcome. Show. If you're new here, this is where you get all of China's current events <laughs> live, hot and fresh every Friday. Shall we saunter right into it? We shall. Okay, so we're going to saunter right into what's new. And yeah, we've got something interesting for you today. Um, Simil, could you explain China's best known alcohol? Baijiu. And uh, can I, you explain a little bit about how it tastes and whatnot? Yeah, I just like to, I want everyone to know how to spell it first. Okay. Because I see the most bastardized spellings of Baijiu. It's B A I J I U. Baijiu. Which means white alcohol. Now, oftentimes, you'll actually see Chinese people mistranslate it as white wine. Yes, they and do that all the time. They're like, would you like some white wine? You're like, I'll have a Pinot Grigio. And then you like take a like, sip, you're like, oh. <laughs> because Baijiu is made of sorghum, which yeah. is grass. I would say that it takes over 300 tries to be able to become used to it. Mm -hmm. Actually, I won't say that. Like, the National Institute of, like, Alcohol said that or whatever. Tasting said that. Yeah. It's one of the hardest things to get used to because sorghum is a, uh, it's basically a primitive corn. Yeah. A primitive grass. A grass, corn. yeah. Yeah. Uh, but it's related to corn. Yeah. Um, and when you distill it, it tastes kind of like how puke smells. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. And it's usually over 50% alcohol. So you have this strong puke smelling alcohol mm -hmm. that takes a long time to get used to. It's and if you, you know, crazy, crazy, like it's 58% alcohol. It can be up to like 70s sometimes. Yeah, it depends. Uh, I had this one called Donkey Lay Down when I was in Inner Mongolia, and that was in the 70s or something. We used mm. to drink that. It was ridiculous. So it's like 120 proof or whatever. Yeah, I never say? understood that proof crap. Yeah, I so it's a lot. Yeah. It's a lot. Now, yeah. the, the biggest, most important thing you have to understand this is not an alcohol that you mix with anything. You drink it straight and you binge yeah. drink it. That's how why it was invented. That's yeah. why what people do in China. They force each other to drink it until they throw up. This is not something you go like, hmm, oh, what a fine vintage. Yeah, it's like well, it's got a wonderful nose. Now, if you do that, you just burn your capillaries or whatever. However, <laughs> they do have overpriced by Joe and one mm -hmm. of the most famous ones, which is considered a luxury brand, is called Mao Tai. It still tastes like shit. It's terrible. Mm -hmm. But it's very expensive. But it's very expensive. And, so And like you might think we're like talking down and exaggerating. No, we've had but lots listen, of Baijiu. Here's the thing. Uh we both used to drink a lot. Mm -hmm. We still drink, not as much, but you know, you you when you drink a lot, you drink a lot of different alcohols. Yeah. And Baijiu still is one of the most unrefined alcohols that yeah. I've had. Like the most uh, ho harsh. It's like I moonshine. It is. It's like drinking moonshine, a yeah. Vitblitz or something like that that we get in South Africa. You know, it's one of these, you know, white lightning. It's really like a very strong alcohol. It does the job, but it's not something that you savor the taste. No. So the most important feature of this is that you can't mix it with stuff. This is not mm. like vodka or whiskey where you have like a whiskey sour or a vodka tonic or something like yeah. this. If you mix Baijiu with anything, the taste just gets a little diluted, but then somehow becomes more vomit-like. You know <laughs> yes, what I mean? Yes. We've tried everything. We've yeah. tried to make Baijiu cocktails out of mm -hmm. everything under the sun, and it doesn't work. Yeah. However, Luckin Coffee... By the way, Luckin Coffee is the, the was this big... Coffee, I don't know, what would you call it? Like, chain. Ex, ex, chain yeah, chain, I was gonna, whatever I was going to say. Chain what works. Gonna say? It was going to be like this extravaganza, you know? It was, this, it was this big thing that came out that was supposed to compete with Starbucks. Yes. Okay? Yeah. And they listed overseas, remember, on the stock yeah. exchange. And then it turns out that they faked all their numbers. And they actually got removed from the stock exchanges because they lied about it, like so many Chinese uh, companies. Well, people need a little context in that. Yeah. Coffee never took off in China, right? Mm -hmm. It was a kind of a rare substance in China to find. Mm -hmm. So the idea for American investors and whether to say Western investors in general were that, oh my gosh, finally a coffee brand is going to really take off in China. Starbucks yeah. is already there, but if what if they had a cheaper equivalent that's going to mm -hmm. be more popular? And that's the idea they were sold on. Yeah. So you had like Western investors dumping tons, tons of money. Tons of money into it. luck and coffee, yeah. And it turned out that it was all scammy. Yeah. And they were like really inflating their sales numbers and all this. It wasn't true. And so they actually got delisted. There's a whole lot of things yeah. that went on. Anyway, it's still around, of course, Luckin Coffee. Their uh, logo is like a deer. It's like a deer, yeah. yeah. It's like a, a white, is it a white it, tail? Oh, it could be, but I'll have to find that somewhere here. Give me a second. Anyway, the thing is that they have now come up with this uh, ridiculous, hang on. <laughs> it's always slow to get to the second page. It works, like really ruins really? the moment. Oh, white tail deer, white tail deer. 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 Anyway, uh, they came up with this ridiculous idea to mix Maltai, which is China's most well-known baijiu, uh, with coffee and have this like alcoholic coffee. That sounds disgusting. That is the worst idea I've ever heard in my with life. With whipped cream. 
That is freaking gross. Yeah. Would you is. drink that? No, absolutely not. No way. That's so, like a mistake. The thing is, um, the shills are going <laughs> ape shit about this. Must they be a love mandate. It. Must be a yeah. mandate. Everybody loves this. Anyway, of course, it's making big news and and it's a curiosity. So everyone's going out and trying it. So there's tons of social media coverage of people going, hey, I got my alcoholic coffee, my Baijiu coffee from Luckin. Shouldn't they pick a, by the way, coffee is not from China. Mm -hmm. There are coffee plantations in, in uh, uh, Hainan. Yeah. But it's not like something that took over it. Why wouldn't they pick a more Chinese animal? Because you're not seeing a lot of white-tailed deer no, walking around not. China. No, you're not. Uh, anyway, the fact is, you've got like all these foreign and China investor forums. They're all like, look, we got to invest in in this. You know, China's coming up with these great groundbreaking, you know, products and so on. Is that something they think is going to appeal to people? I don't think so. That's a, a, such a bad idea that Any, will not persist. Anyway, the thing is, like, if you were to go on, say, Twitter, for instance, or X, yeah. whatever you want to call it, and you look at <laughs> this, call it Twitter. You look at the shill accounts. They're all fawning over this idea. They're like, "Wow, such a fantastic merging, a fusion of you know, oh my it's gosh. it's insane." But we we wanted to know what it really tastes like. Yeah. And luckily, some people, luckily. some yeah, luckily, some uh, real Chinese people decided to film themselves tasting it. So like not some, just the foreign white monkey shield. No, it's not. It's not all that hoo ha. So here we have two, <laughs> <laughs> two, um, you know, a middle aged guy and his father, I yeah. guess, are trying it out for the Let's first have an time. An honest reaction. <laughs> 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 I'm pretty sure that's what my reaction would be to Me be too. Honest. I feel these guys. Yeah. These guys are being honest, you know. <laughs> this is an honest reaction. Imagine okay? say, yeah, yeah, like grandpa, try this out. And he's like, yeah. sure. Yeah, exactly. It was like, try oh. this. You like Baijo, right? Try this Baijo coffee. <laughs> but yeah, uh, look at this nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's obviously hideously disgusting. Oh, you know it's so bad. Yeah, so there'd be a couple of memes, you know, like right. Chinese people, we added alcohol to coffee, isn't that amazing? And then Irish people, because I don't know about you, but when I was younger, I used to drink a lot of Irish coffees. No, I mean, I, I was like more old people drink, yeah. yeah it's, You're old at heart. No, I mean, maybe it's just because South Africa is like 10, 20 years behind this everywhere. This is true. My grandma used to drink. But that. the thing is, no, no, you know what it is, like, um, you don't drink coffee after a meal, do you? Like at, at night. Do. A lot of people do. Is it like a dinner thing? Yeah. Usually decaf. I've, I've but... never come across that here. Oh, I see. Yeah. Especially in the 90s. My, mm -hmm. Every time I went out for dinner, people would always get coffee after dessert or with dessert. With dessert. Yeah. yeah that's that's the thing. I've never come across it here. But in, in South Africa, you go out to a restaurant pretty much after your meal. Every time it's like, okay, would you like some dessert coffee? And that, that's... Oh, dude. It was massive in like... Yeah. 50s, 60s, 70s. And definitely when I was growing up in the 90s, right. you still saw it. Okay, well, it's still a Falling thing. Falling out of popularity. It's, it's still a thing. So when you yeah. go out for a meal with your mates and you're drinking and yeah. whatever, so you're drinking whatever beer, or wine, or whatever with your meal, and then dessert comes along, yeah, I'll have an Irish coffee. Yeah. Because you're still drinking. Yeah, my grandma used to do that. Yeah. But it's actually, I don't know, man, like when alcohol's heated up, it just tastes oh, terrible, doesn't it? So it's so bad. Like, it burns your it's nose. It's like heartburn. Yeah, it's like it's heartburn. It's like instant heartburn. You're drinking heartburn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. pretty much. Anyway. So, uh, yeah, I, I just one more time want to look at the, the, the realistic reactions because you know, you can talk a big game about this being like, look, we're, China's groundbreaking this and that. It's amazing. Let's go to the China Investor Forum and all that kind of nonsense. And this is like, what do you want to invest in here exactly? I don't know. My but, generation drank Irish car bombs. That was our thing. Oh, okay. Yeah. So what is that, IRA? Because it's the Irish Republican Army, yeah. obviously. Yeah. What about it? Because they did the car bombs. Yeah, what does that have to do with yeah, alcohol? But, so what is the alcohol uh -oh. then? <laughs> I think it's like uh, Bailey's. Mm -hmm. And then you drop that into like some a beer or some sort of alcoholic beverage. You know, so you drop the shot into another cup of okay. something. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, yeah. I gotta remember what that is. Let me yeah. see. We Any, drink that. Anyway, the thing is, like, uh, that is a that is the most realistic, solid reaction to yeah, this right. stupid idea. It's it's Bailey's, and you drop it into Guinness. Okay, that yeah, sense. that makes yeah. that makes sense. Yeah, we used to have something similar to that. I don't know if you know what it's called anymore. I love this guy almost puking in. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I love their honest reaction. Yeah, it is so honest. You cannot make that up. But white monkeys will do it for yeah. for a pe a, pen, a a tuppence, a yes. thruppence, perhaps. A thruppence, yeah. But honestly, though, like you will never be able to take away this very honest reaction. No. <laughs> 
it's got to taste so shit. <laughs> we, oh my you, god! You know it yeah. tastes what they look like right yes. now. You know yes. that cringe that they're having. Anyway, um, so that's this new investment idea in China. Now, speaking of beverages, uh, this guy found out he was going to go buy his coconut beer, which, by the way, doesn't that sound oh, terrible? I love coconut, by the way. But would you like a coconut I beer? I would not. It does not match. Yeah. You know it would have that cloying sour taste on the mm. side of your tongue. Yeah. So he took a UV light to the top because, you know, you've got your uh, expiry dates printed, right? Yeah. And he found out that you can see the original expiry dates that had just been, like, erased and then reprinted. So they had expiration dates and they covered them with a new one. Yes. Which because You see, they... you can actually see the original uh, expiration dates on the coconut beer. So there he is. See, it says 2023, whatever. Right. And then when he looks at the original expiration oh, see, dates, yeah, yeah. you can actually see that it's a year old. Because they want to get rid of the stock. Yeah. So they're just replacing. You know, this is the unfortunate thing in China. You've got to watch out. Lots of expired stuff. Oh, it, this you know. is not just on coconut no, beer. No, of course. This is with a lot of stuff, yeah. you know. But it's... It's it, good it shows you. Yeah. yeah. I mean, That's funny. It, it's, it's quite uh, horrendous, you know, and he took a whole bunch. So it's not oh, just yeah, one. You can it. see the, see, what does it say? I like, wonder how they do that. They well, I mean, the, the, whatever way they print it, I don't know how that's printed. That yeah. It could be laser printed. It could be, um, I actually don't know. Somebody sure. in the audience will know the, the way they print yeah. it, but you can use the same technology to erase it. That's true. But obviously it's not erased enough that a UV light can still pick up the original, um, you know, expiry date. The cool thing about this is once you put the new date on, the product becomes fresh again yeah apparently so <laughs> so anyway yeah just always be aware in china that if if a loophole can be found it'll be found you yeah. know there's not enough oversight anyway something to do with space yeah what do we got here this is the embassy uh, embassy of uh china in france this is like this isn't france yeah this is you know we love space space is like cutting edge space space pretty space rules yeah yeah well, space is great yeah so they say something in french um which i translated there and it says Three astronauts from the Shenzhou 15 crewed mission received medals for their service to China's space projects on Thursday. Congratulations. Yeah. Only one problem. This is, this is their post. This is the Chinese government's post. The Chinese government, their embassy in France, posted this picture along with this text. What look at the spot. You spot anything? Look at the picture. It's... Oh. Oh. Yeah. Oh, guys. I see a lot of freedom there. Yeah, you, you can't even post Ooh. your own picture of your own freaking astronaut, probably because it's fake and didn't happen. Uh, you know what I mean? I That's, you were say something else. That, no, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, like, it's just pathetic. Surely they have their own picture. Yeah, they went to space, right? right? Yeah. What are they so doing? So why are America? America's astronauts? And just to double check, let's enhance that visor a little enhance. bit. Yeah, we'll get there. Enhance, enhance. That is the space shuttle. It is. <laughs> that is the American, an American. Oh. It is an American space shuttle in his visor. Oh, Great job, guys. Chinese CCP. Taconauts, taconauts. You are regarded. Yeah. <laughs> Highly regarded. Use your own pictures. Maybe they just forgot to take a camera, but you know, they'll have a CG representation. You know what's funny is that we. I am, we are not, we are a very anti-conspiracy theory unless mm -hmm. things can be proved. We're, we're more mm -hmm. science dudes. Mm -hmm. And when they did all their space mission stuff, we had such a hard time. We weren't trying to prove it wrong. Yeah. But we had such a hard time corroborating anything because there was no evidence There's of it. There's no footage. And the weird thing is, is that America in the 60s yeah. has films, like very detailed yeah. films of everything. But the Chinese space program only has like 3D representations. 3D renders. We, there is proof. Yeah. But it's so, you'd think you'd be documenting the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, you'd think there'd be a, a camera. Yeah. Anyway, speaking of just absurdity, this is apparently art. Well, let's uh, not okay, jump no, to conclusions here. <laughs> okay. Some people like this. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Some people there's do. There's two, two pictures here. Yeah. Uh, anyway, the fact of the matter is there is a famous Chinese artist. Okay. Mm -hmm. Before we even get into what this picture is about, there's a very, very famous Chinese artist, and he sells his art um, for millions of dollars. Wow. He sold it on auction in Sotheby's and all these overseas places. It usually happens when you're dead. What? 
like the art becomes expensive. You know what I mean? Oh, you think so? Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, like, like that's why I say starving artists. You die, and then it's oh no, wow, it's he not was really, so underrated. You get people that sell like a couple of blotches of modern art and make tons of money. It's true. You know, Banksy or whatever, all this nonsense shreds of thing. No. Oh, he's not. He dead. goes around painting random things on walls in oh, like war torn areas. That's true. Anyway, the thing is, like, art is subjective. So you know, one person's art is another person's piece of shit drawing that looks like garbage. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I think I like this. Look at that. It's yeah, please, beautiful. please put it on your I think wall. The, I like the one on the right a little okay. better. Anyway, the fact of the matter is this Chinese artist, I'm got a picture of him coming up here. Mad famous. He's one of China's most famous artists. Okay. You know, he's well celebrated. He's got all these awards. He keeps being lauded by the Chinese government. He's highly regarded. Yeah. Yes, he's yes. highly regarded. Um, and so he makes all these millions selling his paintings. Anyway, so... It just turns out that, unfortunately, all of his paintings are plagiarisms and exact copies of a Belgian artist. So that thing you showed earlier is actually well, one, two things. Yeah, two things. We'll get back to it. Okay. Then we can show you the comparison. So uh, this is a very rare case, by the way, because a Beijing court actually uh, awarded um, like a, a, a judgment that was in favor of the foreign artist. And I think it was just because it was too oh, yeah. impossible too for them to, to say no, yeah. right? But... The fact that this guy's made millions, he's made like millions. like $24 million or something selling copies of this Belgian artist's yeah. work, which yeah. by the way, the Belgian artist, he sells things for like 15,000 euros. Yeah, he doesn't make a lot of money. No, but because this Beijing copy artist was so well-renowned in China as being this amazing Chinese artist, his works had more like uh, appeal Clout. abroad. Because think yeah. about it, you've got a Chinese artist that comes up with these very it's innovative- It's exotic, right? It's exotic that you wouldn't expect are coming out of China, yeah. you know? That's because they weren't. Because there's, there's Cause such little lack of innovation in China. Yeah. Why would they come out with such interesting art? Yeah, so it was picking right. up really high prices at right. auctions. And apparently some dude was at an auction who knew the original artist. And he's like, hey, oh. there's like a poor copy of your art being sold here. And then he found out. So anyway. It's a pre-internet. It would have taken forever to figure oh, this yeah. out. So anyway, Beijing court was ordered uh, uh, the prominent artist Ye Yongqing to pay 650,000 euros in damages to the Belgian artist Christian Sylvian after it found that 122 of his works had plagiarized 87 wow. of Sylvian's. Wow. Yeah. He copied 87 paintings from this one no, guy. No, 122 paintings. Oh, yeah, he, so, co he yeah. copied 87 paintings and produced 122 paintings from those copies. Got it, got it. Anyway, the whole thing is like, and by the way, after this court case, after he lost, the, the Chinese artist is now trying to sue for defamation. <laughs> Wait, anyway. what? So he copied, was found guilty, and yeah. now is going to sue for defamation. So here's the thing. You see the one behind us here with the spindly leg That's the real boy? One. This is the real one. That one is the Chinese artist's one, which he sold for millions or whatever, right? So it's let's, the same. It is, let's look at this objectively, okay? You've got a picture of, in the top right-hand corner, a bird. Yeah. The Chinese artist makes the bird look... That's the first mistake. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't exist in China. Yeah, exactly. There are no yeah. birds in China. But look, he made it fat. Just below it is like a kiwi bird or something. Chinese artist made it a little fatter. Then you've got, I don't know, what are those, sperms or something? Yeah, what would they you... look like Ukrainian sperm. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly the same. And you get it, like there's a, a person behind bars or something, exactly the same. He's got random writing, exactly the same. Whatever that thing is, <laughs> you know that thing right above me, right at yeah. the top, that whatever with a hump, is it a camel bird? I don't know, whatever that is. Sure. He copied that. Oh, yeah, he did. It's exactly the same. Yeah, it's um, somehow worse on the left, though. Yeah, and then he, instead he of a, like a, weird, a boy. Like a weird Sailor Moon looking yeah, girl. Yeah, he drew like a, a girl instead yeah. of a boy. But, I mean, it is the same thing. It's, it's the same painting. It's the same. It's like just a copy. But then like the whole thing is like, oh, no, he was just inspired. That was his excuse. He was inspired by that artist. Anyway, it turns out he's been copying this artist since the 1990s. Wow. Because he went and saw one of his exhibitions in Paris or something and got a pamphlet. It's one thing to do it once and be like, you know what? That was probably in the back of my head mm -hmm. or something. And you could... You know, it's obviously bullshit, but you could be like, you know, it was in the back of my head, and I, I was obviously inspired by his it's work. just plagiarism. But it was over and over again, like 122, 122 times. Yeah. And he sold those paintings for millions and millions of dollars. Wow. And the other guy was poor. Yeah, the other yeah. guy earns like 15000 for right. like his art. Not poor, but Yeah, like, but yeah. you know what I mean? Like yeah. in comparison. Yeah. It's so unfair. That's insane. It's and like, he, the guy was awarded, what, 690000 in damages? Yeah, but the other guy... Tens of millions. Yes, yeah, the other guy made like twenty odd million, yeah. you know, in profits. 
and he only gets six hundred like six hundred thousand dollars. It's ridiculous. Ouch. Or even that less. Sucks. Euros. I like uh, what this mm-hmm. uh, person in the chat said. Yeah. Uh, Dances with Aardvark says, inspired by four-year-old's fridge art. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> that is. I'm sorry, but like, I'm, hey, no I am cannot original. stand this kind of art. Like, I don't like art in general unless it looks good. You hate art. You're, no, you're an art hater. I like art if it looks po. good. Yeah, but yeah. it's got to look good. You're the guy, you know, you go, <laughs> Why? <laughs> instead of buying like a piece... You'll go, like, for your house or whatever. Mm-hmm. You'll go to the Walmart or whatever to buy the biggest box store. Let's say Walmart. Okay, sure. Or, like, Bed Bath & Beyond or something. Mm-hmm. And you'll go to the home decoration section. And it'll have a frame. It'll have, like, a stock piece of art. You leave the stock no. piece in there and you hang up no, the No, no, frame. no, no. I don't do that at all. No. <laughs> I'll print my own shit yeah, out course, and put it on the course. wall or something. But, you know, like, yeah, let's move on. Again, just when, you know... This is actually very indicative of a lot of what China does is this blatant copying yes. and out there without even trying to yes. hide it. And then when they're questioned about it, they re- they're they like, no, I didn't copy it. It's the yeah. same with companies like Huawei. Yeah. They copied Nortel's stuff. They stole yeah. all of Nortel's stuff, put them out of business, and they made all the money by taking someone else's uh, technology. That's true. You know, That's and they'll true. just do it. And people are like, hey, you stole it. They're like, nah, uh uh-huh. No, you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's It's just pathetic, actually. Anyway. This is <laughs> YouTube. Can I do a disclaimer? Yeah, yeah. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Do we have like an alarm? An alarm? No, no, we don't. We've got a sad trombone, though. Can do that. Uh, that's my alert sound. Okay. YouTube alert. You say that you cannot show people getting hurt, like egregious yeah. bodily harm. This is not that. Yes. This person is confirmed to be completely fine. Yes. But I warn you guys, it is hilarious. Yes. So this is apparently supposed to be a demonstration of the self-breaking, self-stopping system. Yes. In this uh, Chinese-built Nissan, you know, there's a um, built you for the. Should have played the train thing. <laughs> that's our alert. <laughs> oh, that's actually our alert. You're right. Where is that <laughs> Sorry. thing? Um, you know, the thing is, in China, when they they have these like joint ventures, but then yeah. they also build only for the Chinese market certain products. Yes. Built in China for China, like you had one of those. I did. Board. Yeah, I had a Suzuki. Yeah. This. <laughs> yeah. this this is freaking old this clip what this yeah 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 it's, but it's 2017 fun. But yeah it's fun it's fun so this is supposedly a uh it's going to show you the automatic stop feature yeah of this let's let's, let's, let's take a look <laughs> where's the sound it's key that's there look at you you've turned it oh down i turned it all so the way down much, i'm dude. sorry so it's important super important yeah the sound is what makes that yeah, I'll, I'll turn it up. Let's get past this plagiarist over here. Is that what you call it? A plagiarist? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. A plagiarist. A plagiarist on like your a family. Rapist, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it sounds like a squeaky toy. <laughs> it you know, people have dogs, does. they have those toys. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's kind of like, or like that. a clown horn. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, just one more time for the hell of it. Should we make that into a soundbite? I absolutely think so (laughs) anyway Uh, moving on to whatever else is new we all know the great wall of china right we do it's pretty great did you know that if you want to get to one side from one side to the other all you need to do is use an excavator to break it down you do i do want to say something what i went to the oldest piece of the great wall in the middle of inner mongolia not tourist site literally it was a pile of rocks and i talked to the people there and it had been decimated because like over time people were using it to build their houses well mao zedong you know the the horrible man who killed everyone in China and destroyed the history of China. He told peasants to go take the bricks from yeah. the Great Wall to build their pigsties yeah. and stuff. And he, they did. He told them to do it, in so they furnaces. did. Yeah, and so they destroyed the Great Wall during those like 10 years or so, a decade or two. They went and ruined it, yeah. okay? So the Chinese government actually had to like try to reverse it. And so that if you go to you know Beijing and you go see the Great Wall, a lot of it's just rebuilt. Yes. Modern, like, it's like a representation of what it probably looked like yes. rather than the actual real thing which is a shame yeah it, horrible. it really was badly damaged during the reign of terror of oh Mao dude Zedong. it's decimated but now because they realize what a big mistake that was it's become like a unesco heritage site yeah. it's now it's like very severely protected now previously it was like go for it take whatever you want destroy the damn thing we don't want any of our history anyway that was Mao Zedong destroy the four olds one of them was a history 
It's like, we don't actually want to be reminded of history, sure. so get rid of it. Um, and now they're like, oh, shit, we screwed up, you bye, know? Bye, bye, bye. <laughs> Let's protect it now. But, of course, there were some people doing construction, this uh, man and woman doing construction, and they thought, well, we don't want to have to go all the way around this thing. Let's just make our own path. And I have I have the beautiful story that I tell every single time. Chairman Mao's favorite, one of his favorite adages was to tell people it's better to spend your entire life moving a mountain to save your time to get from yes. one place to another than to actually go around it. Yeah. Because conquering nature or conquering something in your way is more important than going around that. Thing. Yeah, exactly. And here we have a perfect example. Perfect example. So, yeah, they smacked this massive hole in the wall. And uh, we've actually got some drone footage of it here. So you can see where the hole is there. It's like they made their own path to oh, go do their own thing. snap. That's a Shanxi. Yeah. It's nasty. Look at that. Oh, They've made a freaking hole. That sucks because I really like that. It's such a cool feature. You know, what, the, the great wall? Yeah, that it goes all the way. You know what yeah. I mean? It's really cool. Yeah, well, I mean, I guess those two people are in a lot of trouble. But, you know, you can't yeah. really blame them because they of were taught what they were taught. Yeah. Especially if they've, they are of that Mao Zedong generation. It's actually some a little bit of anthropology here. You can mm -hmm. see, like, how things have shifted in China because they were told to hate these things. Mm -hmm. That Chinese culture, even the language is ugly and bad. Yeah. To get rid of characters, get rid of all of these old things, the four yeah. olds, like you said. And traditions history, and, you know, Yeah, tradition, religion. superstition, mm -hmm. religion, all this kind of stuff. And the Great Wall was seen as one of those things, right? Yeah. It was an ugly part of China's past. We're going to be new like the Soviet Union. Yeah, we're going to be the Soviet Union right. 2.0. Exactly, right? Mm. So you can't, like you said, you can't blame the people because they're just doing what they were told. But now mm -hmm. they're being probably thrown in jail. They're, they're arrested, right? Oh, yeah. They're going to be in big trouble. And they don't know. They're not going to know why, right? But now mm. all of a sudden, all these things that China said was bad are good because the Communist Party endorses them now mm -hmm. they're not not beautiful parts of chinese culture because of what the past dynasties did yeah. it's because the ccp has claimed ownership over all chinese culture so now it's all protected yeah exactly it's like come on guys yeah i know it's just it's a horrible situation to be in but like what a stupid thing to do oh yeah you know <clears throat> i saw what what i'm about to show you here guys is something i actually saw in in real life in shenzhen I got photos of the aftermath because, you know, at the time I was just like, it happened so quick. It's a massive collapse. And this happens quite often. You know, they have those awnings yeah. just above the shops. Well, we'll show you the clip. All right. That's terrifying. Yeah, because you walk under those. Well, and people sit under them too yeah. if there's a restaurant or something right there. Yeah, those plastic chairs. Yeah. So, you know, like when the awnings come down, this Tofu Drake stuff is uh, uh, really not um, good for your health. <laughs> You know? That's a good way to put it, I guess. Yeah, seriously. you got to be, be very careful. And uh, taking shelter from a storm sometimes is a, is a bad idea. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're going to have to make that into a soundbite. You know what? Actually, you know what's interesting? is China's really known for its building quality and how quickly they can put up amazing buildings. Kind of like their train infrastructure. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That You mean that like... I'll get there. Maybe <laughs> oh, you could talk this. about this. Yeah. This, we got to fix this slowdown. I will, I will, I will. How does it work? Well, How do I we just, fix it? the problem is like the main switches between certain things, I just need to duplicate them here because it's when you switch to the other one. <laughs> I love the sound effect there. Yeah. We did not add that. No. So, anyway, you wanted to talk about this? Uh, you do too. Why, yeah. Why, why do I only want to do this? Well, because you wanted to talk about it more. So, you can start. Okay. I want to talk about it too, okay. but not as much as you do. We have merch, the first official merch mm -hmm. for the China show. You guys are asking for it for years now. Yes. Two, at least two By years By the way, now. thank you to everyone who's purchased a yeah. t-shirt so far. We're very humbled and very happy to see that people are interested. Yeah, we started with yeah. a three-week campaign. Uh, there's mm -hmm. only two weeks left now. Mm -hmm. um, so pick it up if you can. There's a few different designs I can show you. Yep. Um, there are... No, you can move on because I made big versions. Of oh, it. you made big versions yeah. of it. Okay. So people can see, you know. All right, yeah, sure. Because people are hard of seeing. Mm-hmm. Do we have the white T-shirt with the uh, the red logo? Now that is a Chinese cloud, like an ancient Chinese cloud from yeah. traditional paintings, and then the dot 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 represents our talk show, our yes. our podcast, and it says the China Show. Um, we have a black uh, with the red font, and we have a white T-shirt with the black font. Yeah. Two weeks left on these, uh, so make sure you pick one up if you want to. We think they're a great conversation starter, and oh, it yeah. helps people understand that you know there's a show out there where people us talk about current events in china we're just happy to have you all as part of uh, yeah as part know, of the family. part of our audience and part of the the crew yeah you know? so go to everpress.com slash the dash china dash show yeah and uh pop in an order
Two weeks left. Yeah, it makes a great gift as well. And now it's time for us to go into the main segment of our show, which everyone knows is Soft Power Hour. And this is where we talk about how China's trying to change your mind and, well, the, the various other big things. And I'm going to start out with this clip of us. Um, one, one quick thing. The yes. shirts are not made in China. They okay. are made in England. So made in England. Asking. Okay, yeah. yeah. Shirts are made in England. Yeah. We only use the highest quality stuff. Mm -hmm. Yes. Go you ahead. Know, England's very well known for its shirt quality. I'm made out of a bit not, of wool from the farm and the sheep. It's not from China. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, I'm yeah. happy with that. Yeah. I'm not just, I'm just saying. Okay. Here's us. Okay. On the street. Okay. You get that. Go ahead. All right. So <laughs> why are we on the street? Well, I'll tell you why we're on the street. This is a couple of years back now, mm -hmm. um, probably 2018 or, so. or so. Yeah. yeah. So we were just uh, messing around with that new drone that I got, remember? That's right. And, um, it has like a follow feature, so we were testing it out. Anyway, the the important thing is where we are. Look, lovely day, by the way. Yeah, rare. Kind of rare, rare kind of rare. So yeah, it was, it was hot though. It was super hot. So yeah, we went out to film. This is in Lohu. This is like my old haunt. I used to go here all the time. Okay, and over here we have a very famous uh, shopping center. And the, the reason I'm showing you this is it's relevant, okay? Take a note of this advertising board over there, everybody. That's like your reference point, basically. Okay, so, you know, I took this footage of the drone taken off. Um, and the reason I'm showing you this is, well, the clip will come in a minute here, hopefully. Come in. I remember we were shooting some bullshit episode. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, how is weather different in China something than like the that, West? Yeah, it was some nonsense. <laughs> we were like, yeah. we got to make a video. Yeah, exactly. So we went out and filmed it. Um, okay, so this building, you can see it here now with the advertising kit. It's pretty well known. There's some clubs in there and stuff yep. and what have you. Um, anyway, take a look. There's that same, you can see it now. There's that same advertising board over there. Okay? Sucks that film quality has degraded over the past few years. Dude, everything coming out of China <laughs> is like, shit ADP. Because when they send it, they, yeah. they uh, strip it it's so compressed bad. So compressed so badly. Yeah. There are so, pictures where you can't even tell what's, what it is anymore. I know. It's awful. It's like, you know what I mean? Like, 2018 looks crisp and clean. Yeah. And then, like, now, yeah. 2023, this is what it's you get. Fried and like, it's probably shot on a Huawei phone. That's why. Pro this is probably a Huawei phone. Yeah, this is a new Huawei phone. Pro probably. Yeah. So, anyway. Anyway, um, you can see that it's all covered in water and there's a boat there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, this is insane. Um, this is right now. Yes. Yeah. Now, because the records in China are, are lame, you can't really tell history because it's been wiped up. But Hong Kong, they keep records. Yeah. And this has been the most rainfall that has been experienced, hourly rainfall, since 1884. It's quite the year. That's that's a long time ago. It's a very long time ago. It's like 150 years ago, isn't it? It's really, I don't know, it's a 100 and something, you yeah. know? It's real. 140 years ago. Yeah, it's really a long time ago. So uh, it's unprecedented in this for southern China. Of course, the floods that were experienced in Beijing recently were worse. Yeah. Um, but no, this is bad. But this, this is, is real bad. Super bad. And okay? there's some bad, naughty business shenanigans happening with the CCP. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which we'll get into. Now, anyway, the reason I wanted you to pay attention to this whole building stuff is there's something more to this, because I want you guys to realize how devastating this is. Yeah. For it to fill up this much, mm. okay, where you've got boats on the on the road and whatnot, you have to realize how much water is here, because there's massive underground complexes right there. Yeah. Okay? So much of the city's underground here. Yeah. Okay, so the reason I'm bringing us back to the 2018 footage over here, or whenever this was, is I'll fast forward it a little bit. Okay, here here we are next to the building. Okay, there's that advertising billboard right here, right yeah. here. Whoa! Whoa! Yeah, remember this this was the new drone and it had some problems, so I was just testing it out. Yeah, that's right. It had gesture control. That's right. Remember that nonsense where you like yes, wave it? I hated in? that shit. Gesture control is so lame. Um, I think there's some f new phones from some manufacturer <laughs> that yeah that brag about exactly. gesture controls. Now the reason I'm showing you this is I point the drone down in a minute. Uh, in a couple seconds or whenever, okay, man, I'm slow. Shot in a minute. Yeah, actually, I think I take take the drone up a little bit. Let me uh, fast forward. What are you doing? Hey, what I was messing VR, around, you know. This is VR experience. Okay. There we go. Oh, okay. okay. So the, now this plaza right in front of that building. Okay, so this is the plaza. I'm standing in the plaza. Yeah. That you saw was covered in water, right? Where yes. boats can go over this. Okay. If you look down over there, you can see down there there are people walking around. That is a Starbucks over there. Okay. Not and there are shops. Here. No, there are shops under there. But that's just the first underground level. It goes down four more levels. That's a swimming pool. I've been down there. Yeah, I mean, that's completely filled up with water now. Yeah. 
Not only that, but the four levels below it, including the metro station, the subway station down there, because mm. there's a subway station down there, is going to be full because, I mean, it has to be full. Otherwise, it wouldn't be up there. It would have drained down there like a plug or whatever, right? Yeah. It's full. It's full. So what I'm trying to say here is not only is this layer of water, but the saturated, the underground part of the city is yeah. saturated and full and completely so destroyed. So many shopping complexes down there. Yeah. I mean... You know, down there, it's just full of shops. And the reason is people want to get out of the heat. Yeah. Right. So, so you have these massive corridors that go on for miles. Yeah. And people are well, those those things are gone. Yeah. So, um, just one more time. I actually put an arrow to where that little underground. I'll get yeah. us out of there. Where that little underground oval that you see yeah. to the Starbucks because it's quite nice. I used to meet people there and you sit there. It's yeah, got yeah, like the sun. There sun shining down there it's kind of nice but then you go into that underground shopping complex which is about another four levels down as yeah. well it's got four levels of just shops and restaurants and it leads into the shenzhen metro station um well now it's a fecal aquarium it, it is i mean it just when you've been there and you know how bad it is you can really like realize that that's a hell of a lot of water you can go, you know you can go to the shanghai aquarium it's very impressive this is the shenzhen aquarium <laughs> sure. you, you can't see anything no but no it's no. there yeah so just just to put it into perspective on how bad this flooding oh, is i uh, uh, i wanted to share something because i can't show it yeah but a friend of mine showed like one of these clips and yeah, look at this delivery guy that's one thing about e-bikes is they still work underwater yeah yeah Obviously, After like, it's going to be ruined after yeah, this. Yeah, no, yeah. no, I mean, all of them do. Yeah, that's you true. You can throw an electric toy that's in the true. water, it'll still keep working. You're right. Yeah. You're right. Um, see, this is like two days ago at the 7th, yesterday. This is this yesterday um, evening. Um, this delivery guy is trying to do his thing, but he keeps bumping into this obstacles in under the Shenzhen water. Longa, yeah. yeah. Somebody sent me a clip like this in Shenzhen, right? Mm -hmm. And it was somebody that said, like, we have to use boat to go to work. As right. Like, you know, I was like, a Chinese person made this clip, and there's a dead delivery driver floating in the clip. And it's like the disconnect. Did they not see it? it it's the focus of the clip. Yeah. Now, the thing is, uh, I uh, had people, obviously, I lived in Shenzhen for 14 years. I got people there were sending me clips, okay? Yeah. And it is it is very bad. I've seen it bad, but not this bad. Yeah. And obviously, because this is like no, unprecedented. This is, tough. this is like, I, I remember having to get out of a bus because the bus filled out up with water in yeah. Nanshan because it was so crazy. And everyone had to like wade waist, waist deep, sorry, to the other side of the road. That was about the worst I saw. Dude, it. I lived in a third tier city and the flooding was even worse. Mm. And this is worse than that. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, it used to come up to my gate in my yeah, house. Yeah, it's insane. I remember. <clears throat> yeah, but you can see here all the cars that are um, buried in there. Yeah. <clears throat> and just how bad it is. And so this is all footage from like yesterday night. And the, yeah. it's, it's very recent. It's still now, you know, obviously. It's going to take a long, <clears throat> long time to recover, especially if you consider all the underground complexes that we're talking about yeah. that are just completely flooded. Speaking of underground... Here's some underground parking lots. Um, oh. We like it loud. Eventually ended up with 19.7 inches of rainfall and 19.7 inches of rainfall in 24 hours in yeah. some places. 19 inches doesn't sound all that impressive, but if you actually know how Every, rain works. Everyone knows that it's a lot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, 19 inches, you know, what's that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A river. Dude. Imagine the, all the destroyed cars. Oh, yeah. They're and all you know, out. in Shenzhen, they always have, like, especially in these Hong areas Kong like too, this yeah. in uh, uh, Futian and Lohu, where this, this stuff was filmed, they have all these very expensive Ferraris, Ferraris and... McLarens, yeah. top end Mercedes. They're all ruined now. All of them. Because all of the parking is underground in Shenzhen. Yeah. You don't get above ground parking oh. at your apartments, it's all underground. So it's all ruined. Yeah, this stuff is heavy. It's a, it's a sea. Millions of cars. Just millions of cars are completely destroyed now. Look at that underground parking. Wow, <laughs> She's like, oh, so exaggerated. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, Kwajan means like, 
yeah, you could say crazy, but it's kind of like, oh, it's like too much. It's too exaggerated, yeah, it's you know? it's too much. Yeah. Such a mess. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so do you want to explain? Because now we've shown you Shenzhen, and you have to understand that Shenzhen, of course, is within mainland China. Mm. So people are sharing these clips of how bad it is, but you'll never get the full picture because the, the government still clamps down. So when people start sharing things on social media, they'll start to get deleted. They'll get toned down. Right? Yeah. But in Hong Kong, that's not the case yet. No. Hong Kong's got the national security law, so Beijing's very much in the lives of people in Hong Kong. However, mm-hmm. they still have open internet, so they can yes. share stuff. And that's why we're seeing way more stuff out of Hong Kong. Yeah, which is, if, for those of you who don't know, Hong Kong is on the border of Shenzhen. And you, yeah. you I mean, it's almost the same city. It's going yeah. to become one big mega, megalopolis. They want it to become one city. So Hong Kongers don't want that. No, of course not. Uh, the Chinese government yes. wants that. I used to be able to see Hong Kong from my balcony yeah. in my the actual you know downtown city and so the new territories and all that. And it's, Hong Kong is much yeah. cooler. Oh, it's, it's pretty way, much way everywhere better. in mainland China. Yeah, no yeah. offense. It's way better, yeah. But mm-hmm. they uh, also put out accurate weather warnings. Like yes. they have a very robust weather warning network because yeah. of the typhoon system. And if you want accurate stuff, I remember when I was living in Huizhou, we wouldn't get shit for warning. We yeah. would get pummeled and there would be up to, you know, five feet of water in the streets. Yeah. And we don't even know it's coming. Mm-hmm. In Hong Kong is a different story. Yeah, you get, you get your, time. you had to get, you, if you see the warnings from Hong Kong, then you yeah. know you're going to get hit. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it says Hong Kong has received a notification from the Shenzhen authorities that the Shenzhen Reservoir will discharge flood water at midnight in some areas. Now new territories will be flooded. So all of northern area of Hong Kong is called the New Territories, and that's rather new land that Hong Kong acquired. Yeah. And what happened was the Shenzhen Reservoir, which is massive, mm-hmm. released their floodgates, and they buried Hong Kong underwater. Well, the, the northern parts. Yeah, but again, yeah. why do they always have to do it at midnight? You know, so they, they're sneaky. Yeah. yeah, they're always sneaky. It's like yeah. when people are sleeping, they probably, you know, released the warning like a minute after they released yeah. it. You know what I mean? They probably already had opened it. Yeah, they'd open it like, oh, we're going to release it at this time yeah. in the past. But yeah, so what that is, that's caused chaos in Hong Kong. Yes. So um, Hong Kong is definitely better built than uh, than anywhere in China. Mm. Uh, definitely has better drainage and all this kind of stuff. But so the, the idea is that, oh, we need to release the, the floodgates literally, in Shenzhen because they can't handle it, mainly yeah. in China. And it's going to go into Hong Kong who can ha- handle it, but it's decimating Hong Kong. Of course. And you also have to understand that uh, things things are not as they were before in Hong Kong. I feel like there's been a little bit of degradation. Yeah. Just because... Yeah, but just the bones are yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is footage from Hong Kong, and I mean, look at that. Yeah, it's chaos. Yeah. That's... I have family members there that said it's insane. It's the worst flood they've ever seen. Yeah, this is a harbor tunnel. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry, nobody dies. No. We, we, a lot of people die, but not in our videos. Yeah, not in our footage, yeah. So stop, you, you, you little... Yeah. <laughs> this guy's... Oh, things are good. Yeah, this, you gotta this do this. Girl. Oh, yes, girl. you gotta do the shuffle, you know? Yeah. It's the safest way. I don't know why she's still holding up an umbrella. Is that gonna help? You're soaked. <laughs> yeah, let You're it go. Soaked. Let it want, go. It's you like, know, mm-hmm. if it's a Hong Konger, then she probably doesn't want to litter. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah, that's what it's it nice. is. Anyway, now, this we've we've been here to this uh, this yeah, metro station a lot, many times. this MTR station, whatever they call it. Now, this isn't this terrifying. You see the water coming down yeah, the escalators, and it just this. gets worse, and it keeps rising up. It's I insane. Hate this. As bad as this is, the metros in Shenzhen are just underwater. Yeah, they're just not, you can't even, because it's less dramatic because they're already to the top. The fact that I could show the, yeah. that footage of that square yeah, we've done. been, the fact that it's all the way above the metro there and they all those floods, the host. shops, you can't like close the glass doors no. and expect it to hold back <laughs> I think billions of metric think, tons. I think some people think that. Yeah. I think they do. The Shenzhen metro is obviously completely flooded in many areas, mm. you know, especially in that Lohu area because we can see. Um, at least in Hong Kong, they didn't flood to the roof water. The drainage could still take care of it. But Even look. after releasing yes. all the floodgates from Shenzhen. Mm-hmm. That's, that. that's some typical Hong Kong Cantonese for you. Yeah. It's a river. Yep. A sheer river. Wow, that's crazy, eh? Mm-hmm. Look at the the drainage system is like oh i can't handle this the sewer i don't blame it yeah 
<laughs> what wow. cheesy! Look at that. Yeah. Man, that's scary. Oh yeah. You make me nostalgic. Yeah, it is. Here in the end, yeah, right. <laughs> I love Hong Kong. Yeah, Hong Kong's amazing. Yeah. So good. At least a little. Yeah. Makes me sad. Yeah, I mean, yeah, just look at that footage. It's insane. And of course, out of Hong Kong, you'll see this. Um, and Hong Kong has got good drainage. Yeah. In Shenzhen, it's far, far worse. Way worse. And yeah. again, they're redirecting it to Hong Kong. Yes, they're redirecting their floodgates. I mean, they, they, they the literally reservoirs. posted it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, so, yeah, I mean, this is this is insane. So this is happening right now, guys. This is like footage from last night. Yeah. And the day before or whatever. So China just can't seem to catch a break when it comes to floods. Recently. I mean, that's again, not to bring back the mandate of heaven thing. Yeah, but you'd think that they're like, <laughs> heaven heaven be pissed. I think it's like, you know, when you try to ignore someone <laughs> yeah. and they yeah. just nag you constantly. Yes. That's what I'm getting from this. Yeah. It's, they're like, nah, it's okay. If you believe in the flood god, yes. he keeps picking that scab. He's like, pay attention to me. Yeah, exactly. Pay attention to me. And they're like, no, no, no I'll put no, a mandate okay. over that. Yeah, exactly. It's you like, know? nope. No. Like, you know, when you when you have a cough and you're like, I'm not going to do anything yeah. about it. Then you start coughing blood. Blood, and you're like, ah, oh, well. Yeah, that's okay. Then you just, like, start coughing your stomach out or yeah. something. And then you're like, okay, <laughs> all right, maybe right. I should, uh, yeah, go all check right. it out. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, it's, this sucks for everybody involved, mm -hmm. and it's nobody's fault here. This is yeah. just nat nature can be brutal. Yeah. Uh, that bus is really like a champ, though. Take a look. It's fine. That bus rules. Yeah. I feel the like. The double-decker buses rule there. <laughs> yeah, they do. I still got my octopus card. So do I? Yeah. Yeah. It's probably got, it's still got a bunch of money. I got like a couple hundred Hong Kong dollars on there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. what is he trying to do? He's like, okay, I'm closing this uh, door. Yeah, that's starting to look a little sus. Yeah, I mean, that's going to just get worse. Like I said, 19 right. inches of rain in 24 hours. Look, he's going, though. He's like, he's I'm I'm moving on. No, I'm saying the flooding yeah. got worse, though. Yeah. Yeah, this is wild. Yeah, that bus is a champ, though. It is. I love that bus. Good yeah. good boy. Those those double-decker buses in Hong Kong are awesome. They're freaking handled you know, like they're on rails. And you know, like, when you sit at the top right at the front, it hey. feels like you're in a helicopter it or something. It does. I get sick up there. Oh, I, I love just, it. Yeah. You do? I get real sick. <laughs> oh, okay. No, I love sitting yeah. up there. It's so cool because it's, like, so weird. You're right on the, the front. On the front, I'm okay. Okay. But if I sit anywhere where I can't see out the front, I'm yeah. going to puke. I gotcha. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah, that's some some flooding. Anyway, you get the point, guys. Lots of brown water, you know, a lot of devastation. To I mean, the... I, you guys understand the flooding has just been apocalyptic in China for th this year. Yeah, uh, it's just been so bad. It's northern China got massacred in Beijing, but then N Dongbei, north of there, got absolutely wrecked as well. So yeah. there were, that was two separate kind of areas that were flooded, like really apocalyptically. Yeah. China b diverted uh, floodwaters from Beijing into these smaller outlying areas in Hebei. Just swallowed entire swallowed towns, towns and villages. Totally gone. Nobody will ever know the death toll because no. there was no warning. No. They didn't warn them. They just, again, no. they released the floodwaters. And, and they arrested people that protest or yeah. said anything about it. Um, and then you have this. And then flooding is to be expected down south in China. That's why we're not yeah. doing a huge spotlight on this. Like yeah. we live through it. We understand yeah. this happens. But this is the worst. And again, the worst, yeah. Chinese people being superstitious will look at this and say, well, what's going on yeah. here? Yeah. This is a little much, yeah. you know. You know, this this kind of flooding is so devastating. I don't think people realize it's not just going to dry up and be okay. No. The no. amount of damage that this water has now done to countless infrastructure and like the underground metro stations and the shops and the everything, it's it's going to take a long time to repair and it's going to cost so much money. I do have a question for you, though. What's that? How is the Chinese government going to blame this on the CIA? Yeah, who knows? They'll say they're seeding the clouds or something. Yeah, you know? cia seeding the clouds. Yeah, that's what it's going to be. Yeah, anyway, we've seen enough of the flooding. I think we get what's going on there. Let's fast forward a little bit more. Yeah, flooding, flooding, devastation. I'm so sad to see those crowns. You know? I would love to have one of those. Those, those I love Hong those. Kong taxis are they so rule. cool. They're so like large in size you know they're japanese taxis that yeah. when they when they can't pass the roadworthy yeah. tests they in japan anymore they send them to hong kong but they're still good they're still they're still good because the japanese like tests are way stringent yeah so they still oh. have you know what's better than them what the ones in japan oh obviously you've been in the yeah yeah yeah, yeah. they're, they're I mean, wearing like white black. gloves yeah. and yeah they're so oh. nice you feel like a real celebrity in yeah those you feel things. like you're getting into a limo yeah. and they're like they hand you a thing of tissues yeah. and yeah it's really nice it's a lovely experience
But I love those things. They're so massive inside, like you're saying. They're it's just huge. like, isn't it just so weird? You sit in the back seat, like this thing is bigger on the inside than the outside. And it's so Oops. old school plush. You know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? It's that kind of springy. Like... I, I would have one as my daily drive. I would love to yeah. DB you one of those. Yeah. I love them. Toyota it's Crown's just, a rule. It's just sad to see it ruined like that. Yeah, there's going to anyway. be so many gone. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, um, I guess it's time for us to move on to. Oh, look at that poor. Oh, oh, people what a, in there. Yeah, this yeah, guy's like, okay, out. I'm out. That's because you got to get out. He's smart too, because yeah. you got to get out before the door won't open. Yeah, of course, yeah. of course. Anyway, it's time for us to move on to our next segment, everybody, which of course is the Wumao Corner, and this is where we talk about the haters. Haters gonna hate. And man, have I been having a lot of fun with the haters as far as this Huawei phone is concerned. Woo! They are just, they cannot handle it. The 5G AI expertise is off the charts. Oh, yeah, yeah. You mean this? So um, I'm sure all of you are aware that Huawei has released a phone which is now capable of competing with uh, phones from 2020 and has... Well, some phones. It's actually on par. The Huawei Mate 60 Pro, the one that they're bragging about, is on par with an iPhone from 2018. Yeah, okay. Just anyway, so people are clear. The thing is, it is a, a great breakthrough that it, they've got a 5G capable phone, 5G sure. speed capable phone. Speed capable. But it's old technology and it's copy technology. And everyone's like, they broke the <laughs> sanctions, they busted. But guess what? They didn't actually because the, the dominoes are falling. The, the equipment that they built these chips <laughs> yeah. on is equipment that they imported in June or they July of this had, year. They already had They've it. been importing hundreds of millions of dollars from the Netherlands, you know, yeah. Dutch, Holland, whatever you want to call it, the Netherlands, you know. They've Netherlands, been bringing... Yeah, yeah the Holland. Netherlands, yeah. They've been bringing those machines in because those machines aren't sanctioned yet. So the sanctions have not been busted. They just haven't... They've just been going around the sanctions and using what is still available to them. Yeah, there's uh, rumors that there's a Korean chip in there that mm-hmm. they hoarded prior to this now yeah. there is still no proof that even they even made the chip yet yeah anyway i mean um, the whole point yeah. is it's really blown out of proportion people are saying it's the holy grail and unfortunately for china it's backfiring yeah because they're going out there and saying see we beat sanctions we could do what we want mm-hmm. so now the american government's saying well you know what let's just cut out all sales of like let's obviously they, they really can, shot themselves yeah, in obviously the foot they there. can do this by themselves now so let's just block all sales of yeah. all like high-tech equipment and chips because they've still been selling a lot best case scenario they made at a very big loss yes very poor profit margins with a lot of effort a, a phone that is very old yes that that's this is what we're dealing with and now because of that the u.s government goes well, we're probably going to sanction them even harder now. Yes. It must be punched in the air right now. Mm-hmm. Anyway, the fact of the matter is you're going to keep hearing about this Huawei phone because it is the biggest propaganda, um, I don't know, what would you say, campaign currently, yeah, currently coming out yeah, of China. For sure. So everyone and their it. dog that's got anything to do with Chinese propaganda is lauding this Huawei phone as a breakthrough and a sanction buster and a, a proof that that uh, China is winning the tech war against America. Wait, What? China winning tech war because they made old, te- best case scenario, mm-hmm. made old tech at a yeah. loss. And here, let me let me all clue you in on a little secret here, okay? I got to tell you because this is what it's really all about. Because <laughs> if you actually look at the articles, they keep saying, see, this is what happens if you hold China back. If you don't sell them chips, you're forcing them into a corner so that they have to innovate and then they're going to just overtake you and steamroll you. So they're going to innovate by making shit? No, but this is the point. Don't you? Can you read between the lines here? What they're trying to do is say, yes. get rid of the yeah. sanctions, please. <laughs> yeah, we useless. really need your tech. We yeah. really want your technology. See, your sanctions did nothing. Yeah, they're like, Stop oh, yeah? Sanctions. If you sanction us, then it's going to be bad for you because we're just going to get better than you. That's their whole yeah. thing. Yeah. They're, and meanwhile, they're like, holy shit, please we release these cut. sanctions. <laughs> please, we need this stuff. You know, you've, it's hurting us. By the way, yeah. just to remind everyone, yeah. this phone doesn't even run off Android. It runs no. off of harmony os which is a useless chinese os well it's actually not it's android yeah but if they look at the source code it's an earlier version of android you just say that what was saying, open though. source yeah. you can't even use the normal version of android no it. you can't no. it's it is a poor copy of android that's locked down by the chinese government and you know what a, what a great it's only product. for chinese apps what a fantastic and, product Anyway, so the fact of the matter is I've been having a lot of fun with this on Twitter because people can't stand it when you point out that, hey, guess what? It actually sucks. It's not that good. Yeah. Because, sure, it's it's a breakthrough. If it's if they're really making it themselves, it's a breakthrough for China to be able to produce something that's like generations old. Like five years you old. You know? Yeah. But... <clears throat> 
This one guy in particular, this guy's just a, a Chinese uh, propagandist bot. It's a Wumao, right? Yeah. Hello world. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's like they just make all this random stuff where they just yeah. go on the attack. And this guy's like, it was calling me an English teacher or whatever, because for some reason people think that it, being an English teacher is um, bad. I think they've they've come to that conclusion in their head. I'm not, I, I mean, I was an English teacher. You know, I'd rather be an English teacher than a slave in the PLA's camps that do this, woo my nothing, work. <laughs> exactly. There's nothing wrong with being an English teacher. Yeah. But, you know, the thing is, I, I haven't been an English teacher since about 2014, I believe. Yeah. It's a long time ago. Yeah. It's, it's interesting how they latch onto these things. Like, yeah. what was your first job? I was a lifeguard. So I'm like, you damn lifeguard. I'm a career lifeguard yeah, now. Yeah, it's like, yeah. you're not a lifeguard, no. are you? Do you did you, I, like... I, I like did gardening years. once for like a you know a hobby or something. Yeah. Do you damn gardener? You gardener. It's like come on guys. You farmer. They latch onto this thing as if it's some kind of like bad thing. Yeah, anyway. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Thing is, in in mm. China, a, a teacher is seen as a, a, a respectable figure. You know, mm -hmm. so he's like, show me teacher Lao Shi. Mm -hmm. You know, he's he's now dealing with me. You know, with, with respect. Um, he's calling you Lao Shi. That's yeah, good. Yeah, it's yeah. good. Yeah. Um, he says. I really want to see your little pixel doing this because he was posting these things of someone multitasking. So he's like opening one game and then like switching to another game. And he's like, can your iPhone do this? I'm yeah. like, yeah. I'm like, dude, my pixel from 2014 can yeah. do that or whatever. 2017. So, yeah, yeah, something yeah. like that. So I said 2017, yeah. you're right. Which is true. My yeah. pixel four plus whatever, or whatever yeah. it was. And so he's like, show me teacher. I really want to see your pixel doing this. And this clip has been going around and it cannot be verified that it's from a Huawei Mate Pro. No, it's probably But it's one clip that all the propagandists have been showing to show how good the zoom is on the Huawei Mate yeah. uh, Pro. Okay. So it's unconfirmed if it is a Huawei phone or not. It could be any camera. All right. It looks like a phone camera zoom. I don't know. That's a hell of a zoom. But it, the so, way it the way it judders. It's just, well. I mean, you know what it's like. You got anything with a that's big zoom, true. It, it if it's digital around. zoom, yeah. So whether it's from the Huawei phone or not doesn't matter because remember, any phone you can take it like an amazing picture of the moon if you've got a lens yeah. in it or whatever. You so you never know. Phone. Like whether this is the mm -hmm. real zoom or not, it still looks awful. <laughs> but he zooms in on this pollution, and I'm like, why are you sharing this? So I just said like, <laughs> why are you showing me China's pollution? <laughs> This had a knock-on effect because I told you many people are sharing this clip of the Zoom. Yeah, like, wow, look at this. Look at the Zoom. And yeah. then suddenly, every time it's being shared now, they cut that last bit out with the pollution in it. Right. Because right. I was like, why are you showing this pollution? Now right. they're cutting that part out. That's kind of funny. So I, yeah. I, I had an effect on their We had an propaganda. effect on something else, too. Yeah, we did, didn't we? <laughs> Coming soon. Coming soon, you'll see. Anyway, um, this is hilarious, and it's very interesting timing because we all know Barrett, right? He's one of the big mm. China white monkeys. He's a big shill, and he does whatever for money for the Chinese government. And uh, he just posted this thing, me on China, hashtag unboxing. Um, I think he meant to say unboxing, but he's like um, unboxing. unboxing, yeah. Program, putting the Mate 60 Pro through the water test. A more in-depth review coming later, Okay. And so I just replied, you just review any old junk, whatever pays, right? Because this guy's got a history of selling, like he's a snake oil salesman, basically. This is a really smart, slick design. It's got really nice lines. It's very ergonomic. I knew we hated N64. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, he shilled for this company that made like a shit case for the N64. I'd like to ask you how a console case is ergonomic. He said ergonomic? Yes. Yeah. Because, you know, ergonomic is something you hold and or handle sit on, yeah. or whatever. Yeah, yeah, but it's on the floor. It doesn't need to be ergonomic. <laughs> what are you, caressing it at night? Yeah, anyway, it turns out this product was a big farce and it, oh, uh, shit. it failed. Everybody hated it. It actually damaged your hardware if you put it in there. It was a yeah. very bad product. And, uh, yeah, it was really bad. Like all the, all the reviewers hated were like, it. they got sent one. They're like, wow, this is bad. So, of course, he was reviewing it. Yes, yeah. but even worse... Yeah, really oh, this nice is for the campaign. No, this is for the Kickstarter, for the Kickstarter campaign. Kickstarter, yeah. He was just hired to do the the white monkey part of it. Yeah, you know, because this was a Chinese company um, operating out of Hong Kong. Mind is very ergonomic. Influenza and colds, but they've also proven very effective to treat COVID nineteen. This disingenuous bullshit at the height of the COVID nineteen pandemic, they sold this banned medicine. Yeah, it's it's medicine that is ineffective. Mm. It's like a cold medicine, mm. and it's got ephedra in it, right? Mm -hmm. It's got anyway, whatever the case may be. They went on 
and were telling people it was a cure for COVID-19. Well, no, they said but, it, it uh, helped with 90% of symptoms. Yes, but no, listen to what the, the young one said, the, you know... The youngling. This is, you can't misconstrue. The really smart, slick design. It's got really nice lines. It's very ergonomic. Influenza and colds, but they've also proven very effective to treat COVID-19. To treat, yeah. you see, to treat COVID-19. To, co to treat yeah. COVID-19. You can't like, you can't misconstrue that as anything no. else. No. So when you've got white monkeys, what they do is they get hired to sell products to Chinese people and Chinese people will take the word of a foreigner Yes. More seriously, because they're so used to scams and fake products coming out of China that they'll always treat uh, a, a Chinese salesman with a bit of skepticism, yeah. right? They'll be like, if someone's claiming that this is going to cure you, they'll be like, eh, I don't know. But if a foreigner does it, they're like, well, foreign products are usually That's why better like quality. like Australian beef and milk powder yeah, yeah, yeah. and stuff like that. So then um, he, he like says this, which is nonsense. This is a clinical trial Shit, published in Phytomedicine, a European journal, showed that in the treatment of COVID-19, symptoms were reduced by over 90%. So there you have Oh, wait, so there you have it. What? Uh, that's exactly why you should be picking up Liang Hua Tingwen capsules to stay safe. To stay that's, safe. That huh? is so disingenuous to... This was for a Chinese audience. Yes. Okay. Um, and you're telling them they'll be safe by taking this cold medicine, you know, yeah. and that phyto medicine or whatever that stupid uh, website. That There's he, a Chinese journal, it was a, by the way. It was a Chinese yeah. journal funded Made by, and it turns out that the <laughs> company that creates Lianhua Chingwen paid to have an article put on there. Yep. That phyto medicine thing. Yep. So it wasn't a European journal. It was just nope. Chinese. And so, of course, you've got snake oil salesmen being used to show off the Huawei. What a surprise. So there you have it. Phone. That's exactly well, what you should be picking yeah. up, Liu Hua Tingwen capsules to stay safe. Should not stay safe. Yeah, whoops. <laughs> so I love that it's oh, unboxing, it. but there's a reason why this is funny. Yes. Okay. Because uh, we just recently did a whole thing on this unboxing China we did. Uh, program over on Xiaoban Ho, which we'd love to. Okay, we're going to show you now. This is our Monday show, guys. Yeah. If you're not aware, we have a Monday sort of VIP show. And we've just done an episode on this unboxing China and thing. A huge chunk of the audience says this is the best job on how we've ever done. Yeah, I'm very yeah. happy. Like, let's yeah. take a look. What what was it all about? The box. box. And this is me, Box. Unboxing China, hosted by Box. <laughs> Okay. This is so yeah, I'll get us out of there. Look how bad this. <laughs> so look at this. You walk in the door you. like that. Look, look at this. Look at this. <laughs> what is this garbage? Wow, box. Look at that flying car. <laughs> wow, box. Look at that flying car. It's a flying man. It's a man. That looks so bad. <laughs> look what she's wearing. What? <gasps> oh my gosh! <laughs> it's the obsidian bracelet. Fluffy after work moments are what we really long for. <laughs> These fluffy after work moments. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? She thought outside the box and ended up outside the box. You know yes. what I mean? Yeah. So uh, <laughs> that was a lot of fun. That was an amazing episode. If you want to go see it. Yeah, you can head on over to patreon.com forward slash ADV podcasts and uh, join the Shaban Ho tier. It's a live show every Monday. If mm -hmm. you like the China show, it's more of that. Uh, it's well, usually it's the different. stuff. Yeah, it's the stuff we can't cover on YouTube. If you catch our drift. Yeah. Um, we do. You did like a mini documentary, basically, there on the unboxing China unbox. Yeah, unbox. And people were blown because the challenge was you took about five seconds of content and stretched it into something gloriously entertaining. <laughs> and then some secrets about me came out and it was weird. Yep. And then it's it's morphed into something else. And you, yeah. um, let me just put it to you this way. You're probably going to want to see this Monday's episode. Yeah, this If you were one. there, at least you'll know what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and yeah, you guys know. Yeah. Anyway, we're going to get into something else now. Absolutely. So, um, <laughs> that, go that stupid us. dog thing just gets you gotta me watch every the time. To <laughs> she thought outside the box and ended up outside the box. You know yes. what I mean? It's a tragic tale. Yes. You ever heard the tragic tale of Darth Plagueis the Wise? This is like Darth Box the Unwise. Yes, exactly. So, we all know um, off your hijab. In fact, that's train guy, right? Yes, hey, pop, pop, pop a train. I'm, I'm, I'm about to do that. Okay. Oh, by the way, you know, like when, um, what's his name? It's talking about his uh, Lianhua Chingwen capsules. Yeah. Being like being a treatment for co like COVID-19. Yeah. Do you know what his source is? What? My source is that I made it the f*** up. 
<laughs> Such a good yeah, bite. It is. It is. Anyway, um, so. Uh, Zhang, yeah, Zhang Heqing. Yeah, Zhang Heqing is the off your hijab, show me your eyes guy, right? Yeah, so he's a, he's a CCP dude. Yeah, I'll get right? excited. What is this? He works for a Chinese cultural counselor uh, in the Chinese embassy in Pakistan. Mm -hmm. So it's weird. He's got this like seemingly low level position, yeah. but he's one of the biggest wolf warriors, which is basically China's like very aggressive diplomacy. He swears at people online. He's yeah. got a massive following. He's always amplifying the direct Chinese propaganda. He Correct. only does that. That's yeah. his only job. Mm -hmm. And uh, one time, one of his jobs was to say, off your hijab, <laughs> yes. because he was talking about uh, Uyghur, the Uyghur uh, genocide. Mm -hmm. And he was using counter propaganda saying like, oh, there's no genocide in Xinjiang. These Uyghur people are free and all this kind of stuff. And he put out this random tweet mm -hmm. and it said, off your hijab, let me see your eyes. Hashtag Xinjiang dance, mm -hmm. which is so dumb because like we discussed earlier, hijabs show your eyes. Yes, That's exactly. the very purpose. Yeah, yeah right? exactly. It's to shield the rest. But you could see the eyes. eyes. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway, he posts this, and I think he's probably drunk and horny or something. Yeah, anyway, yeah. <laughs> he, uh, somebody uh, posted this on our subreddit, it's Rated so Super good. Shotgun. It says, some people are just off their hijabs. And no, some so, are off their rockers. Yeah, some are oh. off their rockers, and that's Cat Galloway. Yeah. Oh, which, yes. oh you, you mean the cat? Yeah. Which I'll get to eventually when this thing works. I don't understand why it's so slow these days. It's getting worse. Huh. You're talking about... Um, you're talking about... Um, <laughs> you're talking you about... Like yes. Me? To be the cat. <laughs> he's uh, basically the king of the tankies. Yes. Uh, he's a pro-authoritarian dude and mm -hmm. does Russian propaganda. So some people are off the rockers, and that, that was him pretending to be a cat in one episode of Big yeah. Brother. Anyway, it says, but some are off their hijabs, and it's Zhang Heqing busting out of his hijab. Yeah. Pretty good. It's pretty funny. Love that one. Yeah. I love our subreddit. Um, as you know, you can see it's there, reddit.com forward slash r forward slash ADV China. Yeah. We obviously have a Discord if you're part of the patron as well, yeah. which is just as good. Um, and yeah, on the Discord yeah. as well. So next what do up. we have next after this? Uh, we had some uh, fan creations, which are great. Uh, this is from Dragon. Are they really? Right. <laughs> yes, this is okay. on our Discord. Okay. Uh, it says Serpent ZA, the snake, and I am Sea Milk, the pony. <laughs> and we are like furries from Sonic, basically. Mm. But who do we fight? I well, don't know. let's find out. We fight... Who do we fight? Piss Eggman. <laughs> Chairman Piss Eggman. If Chairman Piss know, Eggman. If you guys know Sonic, it's Eggman. Yes. He's the boss, right? Yeah. He's the bad guy. It makes sense since we covered the whole Piss Egg thing before. It's you know? perfect. Yeah. Really so perfect. I, I love this art. I think it's, it's fantastic. It's really well done. Very stylized. Oh, yeah. Uh, mm, okay, so oh, you played the Piss Egg memes. Yeah, obviously you gotta. You gotta do it. Yeah. When yeah, ha, ha. yeah, when yeah, ha, ha. My piss is good. Mm -hmm. And then... Uh, this is the propaganda bot, fake okay. news Fido. Very nice. You know, CGT the, the and bots that they have in the Sonic games. Yeah. Pretty well done. I'm Excellent. very impressed. Yeah, Dragonella, good job. Good Fantastic. Job. Looks amazing. Yeah. Great job. Do we have a good job? Anything? Great job. No, but we got great. Great. We, we definitely have a great. Nice. Oh, we do, yeah. Wow, so good. Yeah, yeah. that's a wow, so good. It is. That's it is. Wow, so it's fantastic. Moment. Okay, so what are you showing now? What's this all about? So... Do you guys? I'm very proud of this segment because we're like fortune tellers. <laughs> we're like tarot readers. Yeah. We're like, we look at the stars and we say, what will the CCP <laughs> do next? We can call it. Yeah. So in the last episode called Zuck Betrays China, Unexpected Double Cross, and that was yeah. episode 175. This is episode 176. Yeah. This is what we said. Why is it that uh, the Huawei CFO, Meng Wanzhou, when she was arrested, had a MacBook, iPhone, and iPad with her? Rather than Huawei stuff. I have an inkling of why I know of, of why. Because it's better. Why is the Wang Yi, the um, foreign minister over there, why does he have an iPhone and not a Chinese branded thing? Mm. Why is Xi Jinping's wife using an iPhone yeah. rather than a Huawei? I guess, guess what? I mean, that's an old picture, but still. I think it's a rule. <laughs> what? I think it's a rule. What? I heard mm -hmm. that a lot of countries will make their uh, employees, especially in anyone in a high security clearance. Yeah to use Apple products because they're kind of a self-contained system and much harder to compromise. It's so true. He, if they're using Huawei's, you better, you might as well kiss that data and all your privacy goodbye. Well, it's because <laughs> it's all like some jank. Oh yeah, like oh, yeah by the way, Huawei doesn't even use Android. Yeah, we got to bring this up. <laughs> why does, uh, you know, this Wu Jing guy, he's that wolf warrior guy. Yeah. Why is he like advertising Huawei phones but using an Apple? Oh. Uh, mm, <laughs> practice what you preach, guys. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, that's something that we need to actually address.
Oh, oh. What, it, what happened? Well, just since last week, mm -hmm. we covered this. Uh, China banned the use of iPhones for government officials and state-owned enterprises. So yes. this is millions and millions of people that won't be able to bring their iPhone to work. Yeah. They will have to use Chinese-made phones. They have to, yeah. They just lost so much gosh darn face with mm -hmm. this whole thing of... Oh, there's we, we only covered a few. Yeah. There are so many pictures of Chinese officials using iPhones. Yeah, exactly. They when they're supposed to be proud, iPhones in China. Proud of made in China. Proud it, of Huawei. It has always been a status symbol. Remember when I worked for the rapist? Yeah. He he would buy iPhones, the original like iPhone 1, yeah. for like his best rape victims or whatever. You know? <laughs> like, yeah. he would buy them iPhones. You and mean, every, that sounds really grim, but it's, it's covered true. on your channel. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I did, did the whole thing about that whole idiot. Anyway... The thing is, um, iPhones are seen as a status symbol, always have. I mean, a Chinese kid sold his kidneys so he could get an iPhone yeah. and an iPad. You yeah. know, it's like, it's just crazy how revered they are in China. Yes. So Apple has lost billions uh, because there's a huge over, uh, to be honest, I think it's an overreaction to this whole thing because mm -hmm. uh, people are thinking, oh, maybe they'll just ban iPhones outright in China from now on. But that's not going to happen. What's no. happening is that they're the government officials, they don't want them out in public. This is really what it yeah, is. Yeah. It's not a security thing. No. They don't want them out in public showing people that they have iPhones because they're supposed to be promoting homegrown, made in China things, yes. beating the sanctions, defeating the American imperialism. You know, this, this happens a lot. Like, remember when officials were caught wearing expensive yes. watches, you know? Yes. And then they. We're like, no, you can't wear those anymore. You know, it's just one of those things. Like, it when they get caught out, they have to have an e-joke reaction. So this is what they're doing, right? We couldn't have called it better, really. No. I had so many people emailing me this, and I was like, you know what, guys, mm -hmm. this is really, really funny. In the same vein, though, yeah. Uh, do you remember that Ray Mondo? She's Secretary of Commerce of the U.S. Yeah. She visited uh, China, and they, that's why they rushed this whole Huawei phone thing out. Yes, because while she was there, they were trying to like do a. Well, we're just going to show them up. Isn't it just? proof that the huawei thing is connected to the government 100 percent. yeah i mean think about it we've traced this propaganda campaign and i'm getting yeah. better at tracing it mm -hmm. but we can trace the the beginning of it when meng wenzhou was in trial when huawei was facing all this stuff if it's truly a private company that china has nothing to do with that's which yeah. is their claim yeah that's a claim yeah. is that that's that's how they can get away with all this stuff mm -hmm. oh we have nothing to do with this then why do they keep running to their aid sending all these shills out there to, to promote propaganda, promoting their new product, saying they've defeated sanctions. It is a political company. It is. With political, uh, with political motives. They took hostages on behalf of <laughs> yeah, Huawei. We know the one Chinese of them. government, yeah. Anyway, um, so they made up these fake memes, and I, I got to say, guys, I'm a little disappointed in some of you. Mm -hmm. There were people sharing this meme of Raimondo holding the, I, the, the Huawei, yeah. and they were like, I can't believe she would, you know, the Biden administration would do this. It's just guys, Photoshop, guys. It's, it's not just real. the nationalists and internet trolls were making this. She doesn't use a Huawei. No, she never has. No, this was propaganda memes from china the thing is though if you look at the other side like what happened on our subreddit here is the chinese government does actually use apple <laughs> yeah, products that's the irony so you can actually make a meme the irony here is that they make this meme but they can only make it about a u.s official yes right in promotion of china yeah this right. is fake by this the way totally fake for anyone who thinks these are real no the she chinese nationalists that. made this right they made it fake because that was the whole point of this whole thing was she's the, what's she, foreign trade? No, she's Secretary of Commerce. Commerce, okay. Yeah. Trade, commerce yeah. is pretty much the same thing, isn't yeah, it? I, I'm using the correct title. Okay, you fine, asked yeah. me. Yeah, I'm just, <laughs> anyway, she's a, the Secretary of Commerce. So the whole point was they wanted to release this phone when she was there to kind of say like, yeah. see, if you don't do commerce with us more, then we're just going to overtake you. And that was right. just like a lame reverse psychology, children level, kindergarten level way of trying to say like, Please, please sell us chips again. We really need them. By the way, that phone has got to be the worst freaking It looks like a freaking iPod shuffle. Yeah, which was fine at the time. Yeah, like, you know, those old iPods, you know, yeah. you got the little thing, the wheel. That it, is horrific. It and looks I, like a toilet remote. It, it looks like it belongs in a bathroom. Yeah. It's got that bathroom-esque feel. Yeah, it's like, oh, this is a, a clean device that you'd have. You push it on your bidet. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a, <laughs> you know it's a toilet It's A, a soothing toilet sound. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Anyway, this, on the other hand, is, is genius because, I mean, he absolutely does endorse it since there he is using one. So the irony here is that Chinese nationalists can only make a mm -hmm. meme about a U.S. A US uh, official. Yes. But 
they can't make this meme. No. But this meme is the true one. This is actually real. <laughs> this actually yeah. yeah, he actually has an yeah. iPhone 14, right. you know, Pro, which you can see him using there. The yeah. sheer irony here. I know, it's funny, isn't it? They're not allowed to make fun of their own officials, and their officials break the rules. Yes. So, mind blown here. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we called that one from yeah. a mile away. It's kind of funny. Very funny. And see um, what's next. Oh, you know, next. oh, I forgot to include something. What did you forget? Uh, there, it's now being marketed. The Huawei Mate Fit Mate 60 Pro is that they're using this in the in, in the advertising, not the Huawei official advertising, but like the things where people share it around, like why yeah. you should buy one. Mm -hmm. And one of the things is, if I translate into English, is um, America's CIA can't uh, control your phone if you buy a Huawei Mate. Right, bro. That has got to be the dumbest shit I've ever heard in my life. Think about like one of the wor the world's biggest intelligence organization. What do you think is going to be easier to crack? Apple, who turned down the FBI, right? Yeah. They wouldn't allow them to access their yeah, stuff. And they have a whole walled garden approach to right. things. Or a Huawei phone that is built like with toothpicks. Well, I mean, it's the thing is, it's built on open source yeah. Android yeah. on the Android platform. What do you think is okay? easier to control? Obviously, it's because it's very well-known technology yeah. and it's built on open source stuff, it's going to be much easier to find exploits. So funny. Yeah, it is. It's really, really ridiculous. So anyway, guys, it's time for Worldview, where we talk about everything in the world, specifically with regards to China. And, um, well, it's kind of on the same thing. <laughs> Some American... I, I loved this copium. Yeah, it this is. This is my favorite copium. Yeah. So people are start. The Chinese government's now... They did their whole propaganda push. They rushed the phone out. Now mm -hmm. everyone's talking about it. Bloomberg did some articles. This and that did articles, right? People yeah. are talking about this Huawei phone. Yeah. But like I said, the chickens are going to come to roost when people start disassembling them and figuring out this chip is Korean. This chip may, may be this, stock. This chip was made with foreign equipment with that foreign was brought equipment. in. You know. This phone can't be sold in mm -hmm. the countries that are following the sanctions because of all the rules that were broken, right? Yeah. So Global Times, China's uh, uh, mouth, one of China's official mouthpieces in yeah. English, says some Americans should look beyond disassembling phones. <laughs> they don't want people. They're like, don't, to don't look. look. Yeah, don't look. Don't look inside. Yeah, this is the best cope mm. I've ever seen. Yeah, it is. I, I would read that and be like, you know what? You're right. I'm not. Gonna, I'm not going to look into this anymore. No, let's not look into it. Yeah. Um, but. Going into bans because yes. you know the iPhone ban. There's also a clothing ban. This on is the cards. ridiculous. This 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 idea that they're going to be banning clothing and it's already been proposed by the government. This yep. is something that they're. I'm, look, they're just going to do it. Mm. I'm just going to say they're going to do it. It's not like they might do it. They will do it. Yeah. Yeah. You want to explain what this ban yeah. is? So the the ban is to make a legal change, it's like a legal framework, basically. Mm -hmm. that would allow for fines. So a police could give on the spot fines or even jail time mm -hmm. if a person in on Chinese soil, so this could be anyone, not just Chinese citizens, yeah. are wearing clothing that offends the sensibilities of the Chinese people. And what that actually means is if you're wearing something that the government doesn't like, then yes. that's illegal. And we've shown it on the show before where uh, girls wearing kimonos, Japanese yeah. kimono to take photos in the park or whatever, have been reprimanded yeah. and shouted at and forced to leave by yeah. like old grandpas and well, stuff. Well, in Shanghai, actually, they detained a woman last year for wearing a kimono in public. Yeah. They put her in jail. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, and uh, remember, with there was a woman that was working at a Japanese restaurant and that was her uniform. Yeah. And remember when China was, you had to take COVID tests every day, yeah. like multiple times. She went to her COVID test. They turned her away because she was wearing a Japanese kimono. She was like crying and stuff. She yeah. was like, it's my uniform yeah. at work. She had to go get changed, come yeah. and stand in a queue again for yeah. like two hours to get tested before she could go to work or whatever. Yes. Um, it's pathetic. So especially right now with this whole Fukushima water treatment thing that China is going completely ballistic about, Japan's the number one enemy once again. Yeah. And so wearing any kind of Japanese clothing or like a Japanese school uniform or a Japanese flag will definitely be deemed as uh, hurting the Chinese well, people. Well, yeah, well, this is this is the thing. The reason I brought this up, I don't want to use words like definitely because... Oh, people, definitely. I'm going to say definitely. Right, but the point is, the reason yeah. this is making the news is that people in China are so confused and angry at how opaque the law is. Yes. There is no rule. That's just like they're starting quarrels and, you know, rumors law that they use Correct. to just get rid of anyone they don't like. Right, so I, that's why I want to show this older article. 
is this from March? It says Chinese women are dressing up in school uniforms from other countries as prep comes uh, comeback goes global. So this became a massive thing in China. Yes, yes. And this is the kind of thing that we're seeing a follow up to. So we, we're talking political T-shirts, uh, maybe shirts with weed leaves on them. Definitely LGBT stuff is being banned. Yeah. Uh, we've seen video evidence of that now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, any sort of like thing that represents another country that China doesn't like could could potentially be deemed yeah. offensive to the country, right? Yeah. So we have some some uh, some quotes here from Chinese people on the internet. Yeah, because of course the Chinese people mm. don't want this. No, no, no. I mean, this we, is another one of those things that's taking away something people love. Yeah, right? remember this guy, this Chad who yeah. escaped on a jet ski. You know, he got detained and in a lot of trouble, and he actually got exit banned. He had to escape the country. He ran on away a on a jet ski. jet ski. He rules. Yeah, he does. He's such a Chad. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, this dude escaped and went to South Korea. Yeah. Uh, we just want to remind you guys of that story. It just yeah. happened. But anyway, he was famous for wearing that shirt yeah. against Xi Jinping. And guess what? Now this clothing ban comes on under, you know, to the front. Yeah. So here are a couple of quotes. What do yeah. we got here? So this is from Weibo. It says, Will wearing a suit and tie count? Because <laughs> yeah. think about it a suit and tie is a western appearance. yeah you see like what i'm wearing here well, guess who also wears those well xi jinping, xi jinping and every po CCP official. politburo yeah. why is it called politburo why can't it be like poli pol political something... bureau or something because politburo sounds so lame bureau sucks you know i i always have trouble spelling that no one knows how to spell no, it. no one Actually, knows it changes each time yeah it's like theory. -E -E it's like toy story you know when the yeah. People leave the room and the toys come to life. Bureau actually changes spelling. <laughs> I hate time. that. Like, just call it an office, damn it. Why are you using yeah. this French word? Bureau. Yeah. Anyway, um, Will wearing a suit and tie count. I love that. I think yeah. that was really good. Uh, Marxism originated in the West. Yeah. Think about this. So in China, you're forced to learn Marxism. Yeah. Uh, this is not cultural Marxism or any of that hubbub. Don't bring this, you know, domestic yeah. politics. And they actually have to go to Marxism class and Xi Jinping thought class yeah. in college and mm -hmm. in elementary school now. Uh, would its presence in China also count as hurting national feelings? So these things that China really latches onto, would that count as hurting national feelings? Yeah. And this is this guy's being facetious. Yeah, the problem with this is you never know what could get you into trouble because it changes so fast. Mm. Like, you know, the Chinese government was encouraging everybody to harass Japanese people yes. with its campaign of like, yes. oh, it's bad. So people were calling Japan, <laughs> like random phone numbers in Japan to like, basically swear at them and harass them because of the Fukushima thing. Yeah. It's got nothing to do with people in China. They were phoning like ramen restaurants and stuff and swearing at them and telling them like how bad they are. Yes. And, things. and the Chinese government was encouraging this through its actions. It and then all of a sudden they started to arrest people for doing it. Yeah. You know, yeah. like you're hurting the, the repu uh, the whatever, the communication between China and Japan or whatever. So, you know, like you could go and wear a t-shirt that says like, you know, screw the Japanese or whatever because the Chinese government is encouraging it. But then the next minute, they might decide yep. that that's bad, it's inflammatory or something, and you could get arrested by the Chinese government. That's a really good point. You know? Uh, next, yeah. the next quote. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a couple of these that were really funny. Um, I love the sarcasm. It's really, really key. Yeah. Next up, we have, uh, this is, I believe, from WeChat. This is yeah. Weixin up there. So, to wear a kimono is to hurt the feelings of the Chinese nation. To eat Japanese food is to jeopardize its spirit. When did the feelings and spirit of the time-tested Chinese nation become so fragile? This is a Chinese person saying it. Yeah, since Xi Jinping came yeah. came into power, basically. If we are <laughs> so if we are so strong, like the government tells us all the time, then why are we so threatened by this? Kind yeah, of why stuff? is food like a yeah. something that hurts or something the to feelings? wear? Yeah, it's right? very true. There's one more. Okay, there's one more coming up. Cool. These are great quotes because yeah, yeah, these are the Chinese people that are speaking out. Yeah, because they, they think can. this law is ridiculous. Nobody likes this. No. So it's definitely bring, uh, it will definitely bring a huge uncertainty and wide op uh, open wide the door of convenience to arbitrary and unauthorized uh, punishment. This is from a doctorate, uh, yeah. a PhD dude in China mm -hmm. uh, who runs a popular Weibo. And he's saying, listen, guys, this is a slippery slope because you open a law like this, it could be used for anything. And it, it already could. is. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. Like, imagine somebody's wearing a uh, short skirt or something, yeah. and they can say, like, that offends the feelings yeah. of the Chinese people. It's opaque on yeah, purpose. It is. It's yeah. so opaque. You could have, like, a, I don't know, a torn jeans or, yeah. you know, like, in the Soviet Union, jeans were illegal. Yeah, yeah, for a you while, know? yeah. People selling jeans got executed. Yeah. You know that? Yeah. Things like, like, literally, yeah. people that sold jeans because yeah. they were Western got, it, like, executed. It could be anything. They could literally say, like, oh, you're wearing blue. 
that's like not Today, a, not that's okay, bad. You know? I know that's like very dumb. Like we're coming up with dumb examples, but that's the point. Yeah, is that the picking quarrels and causing trouble law in China? This law has been used since 1997 for the most insane things. Yes, like you can you you can hit anyone with it. Yeah, if you have an argument with someone on the street or like uh, somebody shortchanged you or something, and you're like trying to dispute it, and you're you you know in the past you said something against the government, they're like, oh, you're picking quarrels and causing trouble. You're going to jail. Yeah, and they do that. Yeah, they can do. They can just do say whatever they want. You yeah. know, it's so opaque. But it's an awful, awful thing. And the last thing we're going to talk about here today in World uh, View is something that we called, okay? Um, Zhengzhou is now subsidizing new births. Remember we said there was going to be stages of this? Yes. This is, we're getting towards the la final stage of our prediction. Yes. Well, here's how it goes. Mm. In Zhengzhou, they're rolling this thing out that the city will offer a one-time allowance of 2,000 yuan uh, for families uh, registering their firstborn to the city, in the city. 5,000 yuan for the second one. By the way, this is very small chunk Yeah, it's change. under $1,000. It's like, yeah, 5,000 yuan is like $770. Bucks, yeah, yeah 770 yeah. Okay, no. and like 2,000 yuan is 110 Um and then the third child, you get 15,000 yuan, which is about two and a half thousand dollars. I think this is going to be 2, so... This is a very wealthy big city. Yeah. And they're giving a stipend of $110. Like, this kind of gives you a window into how poor China actually is. Yes. They don't want you to know this. No. But 110 bucks in a developed city? Come on. I know. It's, on. it's pathetic. So, the, But they're like, basically, hey, you can get free money if you have a kid. Yeah. And a lot of people will go for it. They will. Yeah, That's because China's it's money. Poor. Yeah, because China's <laughs> poor and they'll go for it. Um, but this is the first stages. Incentivize. Yes. If that doesn't work, force. Yes. It's gonna, how it's going to go. We're we're watching this unfold. Yeah. We've, we've called places. this from the beginning. Yeah. And this is the beginning of it. And it's just going to keep escalating. We're rarely wrong about this kind of stuff. Because China makes it pretty easy to understand where it's gonna ending up. Like what it's teasing. Yes. They're teasing the forceful births. Yeah. yeah. It's going to get... I mean, they forcefully aborted they forcefully why, aborted why not do the opposite yeah, exactly <laughs> you know I mean? yeah, if they can force you to kill your <clears throat> child no matter what and there's no recourse they can force you to have kids yeah they can force you to do whatever they're yeah. a tyrannical piece of shit government yeah yeah out of control anyway that brings us to the end of the main sh part of the show and it's time for yamcha which is our q a this is where we answer your questions and you question our answers it's also friday guys so it's time to chill out relax i get to loosen the tie we get to uh, get into the whole thing. And uh, for those of you who are watching, not right now, live, um, well, this stays up over the weekend. So if you're watching on the weekend, you're watching this part too. But otherwise, we cut it out of the show on Monday. But if you are a patron, you will always have access to the full shows, including the Q&As, because we re-upload them and share them there on Mondays. Yeah. Um, and of course, if you're on the patron thing, you get access to the Discord. And, uh, you know, if you're on the Shaban Ho tier, you get access to Shaban Ho. So yeah. check it out. If Definitely. you have the means, we'd really appreciate it. Anyway, uh, so if you're not watching live or on the weekend, we bid you adieu, stay awesome. And for the rest of you, let's get started. Yeah, we're actually, we had so much material. We actually, we went a little long because it's only it's 6.30 now. Yeah. But we usually, we'd be done around the hour mark. But for that much material to finish in an hour and a half, yeah, pretty beautiful. Bad. Pretty yeah. beautiful. Yeah. It's pretty good. Uh, Ruby R. Agagon says, Hi, Winston, support your channel. Question, uh, what do you have against bakers? <laughs> Lead us to watch <laughs> Corpo all the way. May I get a <laughs> yeah, Y? Hi, Nan, please. Uh, uh, we have oh, yeah, well, we've got a how true. I'll have to give you that. As far as bakers are concerned, I just have something against people that, that their whole aspiration in life is to be a medieval baker. Mm. That's all. Did I ever say that was my af aspiration if you could, for life? You had a choice to Let's be anything. Let's not get into too much detail. To be anything. Yeah. Yeah, you'll find out in Xiaoban Ho. Anyway. You're definitely gonna want to go to that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's gonna be good. It's gonna be bizarre. Uh Jana Howell, thank you very much. Gilbert, thank you very much. Two MCNA two, thank you very much. Mark Carl, can I get my favorite Subway Wonder Man? Uh yeah, you sure can. If you just give me a little bit of a lag time over here. I gotta fix this. It was never this bad. Have we added too much to it? No, it's just, it's lame. I don't know why. It's obviously needs an update or a change or something. Hey, do I look like a subway wonder man? Um, <laughs> Jim Flag, thank you very much. Mark Carl, I prefer watching you live because wow, it's so good. Oh, it is, isn't it? That's not gonna go back to that one. There we go. Wow, so <laughs> good. Um, you have a splinter, do you? Why is this nonsense? There, just get that what out. What are we doing in this pit of despair? This is normal. This is just. <laughs> 
strong show. You know, this is what happens in China. If you live sure. in China, you see this. It's you, strong show. You're correct. When they finish with the road, they'll break it up and redo it again just because that's what keeps the economy going. That's true. That annoyed the oh, crap out that. of me. <clears throat> you know, like when I was living in Shenzhen and the Lohu area there, they would finish it. The road would look great. The pavement would look amazing. There's no reason to change it. Okay, no, no reason. No. And then they'd come in and just like rip it all up and pave it in again. The exact same. You're like, come on, guys. And then they're jackhammering at night and stuff. Like, get out of here. For no reason. Other than to just keep the GDP going. Uh, you know? Anyway. Doc Southington says, old Doc here, even though the Discord gets out of hand sometimes, it's hands down the most diverse and wild group chat ever. I invite you all to come and see it firsthand. And I absolutely agree with that. There is everyone from every background of everything ever, and it's very fun. Mm -hmm. I, I tend to get caught up in it because when I go on there, I end up watching all the chats. It's very, very good community. That's on the Patreon. Yes. Um, you, you know, know how to get there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Patreon.com forward slash ADB podcast. It is great. great. Mm -hmm. There is currently a fan art con contest going on till the end of September. Don't forget, if you're on the Discord or on the subreddit, put in your submissions. The theme is called "You Got to Understand China." Oh yeah, this one. You got to understand the eyes of China through a shill. Mm -hmm. And in if you make artwork um, for that, the top three people will end up in this year's Royal Rumble, which is a wrestling match we have every winter. Yeah, it's very fantastic. Fun. Can't wait for this one. Uh, too keen to give what says sounds like something you'd find in Shenmue Three. Mm. Shinri 3 is terrible. Oh, yeah, the, that motorcycle asset. Yeah, the yeah, unboxing. yeah. That yeah, yeah. <laughs> reminded me of Shinri. Yeah, it's true. <clears throat> Jay, there's a Renaissance Fair in uh, Kansas City coming up. Maybe maybe I should go as a baker. Hashtag Winston advice, please. Happy Friday. Don't give away too much. Yeah, we'll talk about that on Monday, bro. Thank you. Uh, MH Caffey, thank you very much. Tuni Tahitian Fire 987. Thoughts on the release of the Mate 60 Pro? It's being hailed as Huawei's victory over US sanctions. Yeah, we covered that. They just shot themselves in the foot. Seriously. They did. And it's not great. That's the thing. It's average. It's just a phone, you know? <laughs> Magistar Generalis says, Baijiu, piss eggs, and a side of Jurgen. <laughs> yeah. That has got to be the worst meal idea ever. Yeah, Imagine it's pretty piss bad. eggs, Jurgen, and then drinking Baijiu. Terrible. Uh, Amanda Schwartz, thank you very much. <clears throat> Magistralis, uh, Magister Generalis says, can I get a starfish Austrian painter? Oh, you certainly can. I just want to get there. For those of you who don't know, this is something that we uncovered on Shaban Ho, and it's just absolutely offensive and hilarious all at the same time. Let me just see, where did I even put that thing? Yeah. It's around here. It's got to be this one. No, is that's that a leprechaun. What am I doing? I found it. <laughs> Starfish Hitler. We love a good Starfish <laughs> Hitler meme. Dude. And that's not a meme. That's actually from a TV show. Yeah. Yeah. Which Why do you we, keep doing I this? I freaking hate this microphone. Put it in the middle where it's supposed to be, and then it won't bother you. It was. You. Oh, you obviously messed it up. Well, put it on yours. No, you use it. You don't use it? No. Oh, yeah. True. <laughs> there. I'll fix it for no, you later. No, it's fine. Oh, we'll see. Uh, Hiram Securus, hi from Mexico. Hello. Hi. Uh, Adam Schwartz, though, thanks for inspiring me to create my own business. All my stuff is made in the USA. That's awesome. That's epic. Well, please, done. please send a great cotton train pig bay. Wow, that's that's a bit intense. much. What I'll do is I'll uh, you'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> that's good no, enough to no. me. But thank you very much for your support. Uh, Koala1203 says, how does that guy's artwork compare to Sarah AI? Which one? The, the plagiarizing guy. Oh. Well, you know, the thing is about um, Sarah AI. Yeah, young girl and beautiful. I mean, yeah, I don't know. Splinter, That's just plagiarism. Splinter cell over here. What are you doing? Yeah, like, splinter. Yeah, yeah, see. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, yeah, is it that doesn't interesting? compare. It is interesting. Is that interesting? Yeah, yeah what are you going to do? Train some turtles in a sewer next? What? Okay. Splinter cell? <laughs> no. What? Splinter. Oh, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I said splinter cell, so I thought you'd be going off no, Tom no, no, Clancy. No, no, no. Okay. Um, Hovac, Arnian wants a... Oh, you can have one. You're just going to have to wait for it. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. What is this 56K modem? Well, here it comes. I think. I think. <laughs> this sucks. I'm going to fix this. I'll, make sure. <laughs> I'll fix it before the next show. I have to. Earn nothing. How do you guys manage to look so young and beautiful? <laughs> we just had that one. Okay. Thank well, you. you. We appreciate it. that. No, we just we just look old. That's how it goes, you know. CDR crash. 
very generous. Thank you very much. Also with uh, Hovik. Thank you very much. I uh, love y'all. Love y'all's content. Sadly, I'm going to have to miss this live, but keep up the great work. Thank you. You can <clears> catch <throat> up, and we appreciate it. The Ape of Naples says, the guy who tore down the wall was 38. Not that old. Yeah, you were saying he's old. I was like, why are you Which saying one? he's old? The guy that tore down the Great Wall. Oh, <clears> what, that guy? Yeah, he wasn't old. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> he's my age. <laughs> well, he's got old parents who taught him those bad habits. Oh, okay, you know what I mean? Enough. Hey, Watson, out of curiosity, what do you think about dressing as a baker for a Renaissance festival? Wow, so good. <laughs> yeah, uh, this is something we'll deal with. Yes, yeah, we'll so we will with. deal with it. We'll yeah. deal with it. Um, I'm just going to give you something else for now. I'll give you a. Uh, I know that sounds. I don't want to be. Nothing would bother me anymore. I don't want to be exclusionary, mm -hmm. um, but you'll you will have to go to the Shabba now to understand this constant joke that people are harassing. Yeah, you. about medieval bakers. It's basically harassment. Yeah, it's funny though. You'll see. It's a big story on coming up this Monday. Big big one. Yeah, uh, Andrew. Nothing Lapanese. to do with China. Uh, sorry, Andrew Lappin C. Morbid cognitive decline. That sounds like me, yeah. Common cure. Have there been any updates on the uh, whereabouts of Naomi Wu? No, we haven't seen anything. Pleb. Sometimes it's better to, you know, not put people in danger by shining spotlights. Yeah, people are, we talk about it. No, I mean, you got to understand like it's a very game, sensitive situation. It. And the more spotlight we try to shine on it, the worse it could be for a certain individual. For so sure. There's a reason why we're not bringing it up in a big way. Yeah. Well said. Pleb, uh, China Show shirt looks good. I can't wait to have it. Thank not you. as cool as my Anger Worm short though, shirt, though. I just need a Color Wolf t-shirt and my life will be complete. I was going to make one for my channel, actually. Yeah. Well, here we got uh, Anger Worm patch still here. Is Anger Worm still it's, a thing? It's not, it's not for sale. No. Don't but sell just, that. Just saying. So like buy we, a China Show t-shirt. Yeah, instead. absolutely. I'm just saying I still have a couple. We could um, have a giveaway yeah. at some point. Um, yeah, we should make a Color Wolf shirt since we made a whole thing on... Yeah. Yeah, I was you thinking know. about it. Yeah. Uh, also, barbecue massage satisfaction me, please. Ah, yes, you got it. I could go for one of those. Yeah, I could do. I could do it with a barbecue massage. Yeah, That's I want awesome. most of these to have the barbecue. <laughs> I could do it with a massage too. I yeah. think it's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Archdeacon Henry Ikari. Not even Xi Jinping will stop me from cosplaying as Winnie the Pooh. If his clothing makes me feel bad, then the more pity to him. Mm. Sean Rice Winston. Not sure if you. Yeah, we are, we heard about that. Elstrom Kerr, Mandate of Heaven, chi Activated China, Wake Up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it is getting a little nasty, those It parts. is. Like, it's, these, <clears throat> these, it's just relentless. Yeah. <clears throat> it's terrible. You know, it's awful to be in that situation. Yes. Yeah, um, yeah I suppose that would work today. Um, what? No, no, it's unrelated. Okay. My shawarma, what does the worst... Thank you, Roman Reyes, though. I appreciate it. My shawarma, what does uh, the worst pollution in China smell like? I would say mm -hmm. there is some different flavors because when I was in the industrial area down in Guangdong when most of the stuff was still made there when I first got to China in 2008, <clears throat> it smelled like plastic smoke. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like if you ever have a burn barrel or anything or you have a campfire and you chuck like a plastic. Burn plastic, yeah. Yeah, you burn plastic. That's really what it smelled like. Yeah. When I moved up north, it was smelled like coal smoke. So if you've ever mm. smelled coal on a fire, that's yeah. what it smelled like everywhere. Yeah. Uh, so it's a different it's flavor. awful. The worst I ever experienced. Because, you know, like Shenzhen, because it's a coastal city, yeah. you'd be kind of, you wouldn't have to worry about pollution that much. But there was one year in particular where the pollution it was so bad for like a month and a half, almost two months, where like every day was just gray mm -hmm. horrible skies it makes you so depressed so sad it's awful it like it makes you literally just want to off yourself you know yeah. what i mean you feel yeah. like this what is life yeah you know and finally it broke but the worst is when i went to beijing one time i've been to beijing a couple times but probably the first time and i got off the plane and immediately my eyes started to sting mm. and my lungs were burning mm. it was that bad i just couldn't it's believe how so terrible bad. it was it's so bad it was so freaking awful yeah, I, I would never want to go back there again. I know, like, you get good days in Beijing, but, like, if you hit one of those bad days, it's, like, it's, it'll turn it's apocalyptic, out, yeah. yeah. Xavier, 7392, y'all have said that before Chinese are rather superstitious, and I'm curious if they include any Chinese gods in those superstitions. Harvest is there. Yeah, of course. Yeah, you still see the god statue, especially down south. 
Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, you'll still see the little statues in the restaurants and things. But remember, the majority of the religion and superstition has been wiped out. Yeah. So now it's all revolves around money. So they'll yeah. have a god of money there that they put offerings for and stuff. Try some dough. Try some dough. Yeah, it's one of our favorite. The god uh, of wealth. Yeah. Favorite uh, New New Year songs. Yes. And then your personal favorite, the toy dolls or whatever. Uh, I think that's yours. <laughs> you literally <laughs> found out what it was. I had no idea. I it's had heard it, but I didn't know what it was. The worst thing you've ever heard. And every Every year they blast it on those. Yeah, they blast these stupid, like tinny, but big, loud tinny, like treble to the Uh, max. Treble all the way. Like MP3 speaker things. You take that bass, you blow it out first. You don't turn it down, you blow it out. It's not about that bass, not that bass. No, it's all All treble. Yeah, Yeah. all all treble. (laughs) And the bass blows out to the point where it doesn't work anymore. Yeah, yeah. Because it starts out with the bass. Mm -hmm. You use that speaker for a couple seasons, the bass is gone, and then you turn the treble all yeah. the way up, and it's, it's got the worst, like, techno thing, and it plays over and over and over again, and it makes, it's not even a Chinese band, it's like a Thai band or something, a Thai. Yeah, it's a Thai, well, it's Chinese but, Thai people. Yeah, Chinese yeah. Thai people, they're singing in Chinese, but it's the most horrible, like, ear rape you've ever heard. It's ear rape And it's was. everywhere. Yes. Oh, man. It it's already, just, I feel like the original recording is already ear rape. It just makes you want to, like, go and kick that speaker in, you know? <laughs> yeah, and, like, make, make force, me irritate. I want to, like, take that speaker and just grind it up and force feed it to whoever was playing it, you know? Make them sniff the powder, <laughs> yeah. you know, shove it in their ears and yeah. just, like, make them, like, smother them in it. Yeah, it's like, oh, it's awful. I hate that song. Yeah. Oh, man, anyway. that's bad. Sorry, that's <laughs> yeah. a complete tangent. Yeah, but, yeah, when you've lived in China and year after year, that freaking... It kind of sounds like that train. Oh, you know, yeah, like it's, it's got that... It's, but it's, it's just worse. Yeah, yeah It's just sure. worse. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, two MCNA2. Teachers fail more students than cops ki- kill people. Defund and abolish. What? Yeah, what does that, that even mean? Anything. Yeah. What's your source? Yeah. 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 What is your My source? My source is that I made it the f*** up. <laughs> <laughs> Doc Sodington, you have to wear the costume, Matt. You have to. Doc, shut up. Yeah, Monday. Stop bringing this up. Monday. <laughs> yeah. I can't believe I allowed this bullying. Mm. Phil, is Box just a Chinese knockoff of Boxy? Oh, remember that Boxy thing? That was from like 2011 or something. No, it's got nothing to do with that. No. Jeb, considering all the flooding, do we know how many chip stores that got potentially flooded, making the chip shortage worse? I don't think that has anything to do with it. Well, I mean, Shenzhen is where the Huawei stuff is made, by the way. Yeah, I just see. But I'm pretty sure that it's okay because it's not going to be in the underground malls. Yeah, I also don't think. That, I guess the I I can see what Jeb is saying though. If like the the machinery or something was damaged, yeah, but it's not going to be in a mall. No, it'll be in a like a factory, probably secure, hopefully. Yeah, for them. Gilbert wants a long pig and wash it down with Watsons. Okay, I guess I gotta go back to the. Th- I'll give you a long pig. Makes me irritate at the mission of pig bait. Hey, hey, what's that? Nice. Don't forget Peter Bolsack, also known as Peter Dazak, <laughs> you know, who helped muddy the waters when it came to the origins of COVID. It's true. I like writing that anyone who says it might come from a lab is a conspiracy theorist. He was talking about me. Yeah, I was talking yeah. about everyone, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I was the like yeah. actual was the scientists beginning. that were also yeah. like, hey, this is very possibly from he's like, no, don't listen to them. And then you got other people to sign it in his stupid like nature yep. magazine article or whatever. Yep. Two MCNA two, what are your thoughts on the CCP operative in the live podcast? Keep seeing the chat saying CCP confirmed. Maybe I'm not seeing the comments they're referring to. Uh where's your source on that? Oh yeah. Hang on. It's one of those <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna take forever but source okay on that too, MCNA yeah. too. is this your oh, is this your source is this your source is this your source it doesn't work but it's my <laughs> source is that i made it the f- up <laughs> lecker says executive order 12731 prohibits federal employees from being in any commercial for private business entities they're lucky lucky raymano doesn't know raymano doesn't know yeah interesting that yeah. uh pleb says banning Q- Cutie Asian girls in schoolgirl uniforms? Gross. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, gross. Come on, we don't know. I mean, this, but it could be wide sweeping. We'll see. Uh, It'll be a, I mean, a law of convenience. Uh, I've seen, I've seen um, people cosplay as Japanese schoolgirls mm. in China, and that's going to be offensive to certain people. To the government, yeah. And certain people of a certain mm. age, they're going to be like, anything Japanese is offensive. Yeah. You know? Mm. And so they imagine like a. An evil uncle sees someone cosplaying in the park and they're taking photos or something. He just needs to phone up like the local yeah. 
Secure we'll see. We'll see as this is rolled out. Yeah, but it's probably bad. I'm pretty sure that's what's going to mm. happen. I mean, I've seen it actually happen already, even yeah, yeah. without the For law. Sure. People For being sure. bullied and and de- derided. And yeah, things happening if they're wearing a kimono. So why would this not happen? Now yeah. there's a law to back it up. You're right. You know? Mudgoy bath bedroom pen tester here. A what? The first phone I broke was a Huawei. What is a pen tester? I What's no a bedroom idea. pen? That not sounds. Sure. Sounds dirty. It does. I don't know what he's going on about. Sam Windmill, does the CCP exist only to come up with more reasons to put people in jail? Yeah, pretty much. Yep. Archdeacon Henry Akari, thank you very much. Florence Dono, thank you for everything you do. I was able to get my dad aware of the Uyghur genocide with your help. Uh, by the way, did or do you guys like Lao Gama? I absolutely love Lao Gama. And yeah, I think it's pretty good. Yeah, love it. Eat it all the time, actually. Mm-hmm. It's a staple in my fridge. Mm. Uh, possible person if matt doesn't wear the <laughs> baker cosplay on monday we will riot also will you two show your hands multiple angle high quality for science <laughs> absolutely not a possible what? person what you do always ask for the shirt remember oh, okay yeah yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. it's biometric yeah yeah biometrics yeah. biometrics i mm-hmm. uh, yo uh, from rd josh I, uh, we didn't hear a tongue show on the last week oh, oh you're getting it now and the follow-up Uh, to MCNA2, a possible person has made the best super chat of the day. If Matt doesn't show up on the show in a democratically elected topic on Monday, there will be blood. Cook baking cheese, making cheese cake, man. <laughs> uh, all right, all right. Sounds good. All right. Um, let me catch up here. You got a good old fashioned snap, which they have not fixed yet. Never Love will. That. They'll they never, never will. fix that. Yeah, what's the point, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, Jeff Ramos, if it's so preposterous, are mm-hmm. Chinese officials using Android US software phones should be banned? CCP banned Geiger counters too. Yeah, I know it's preposterous, and let me find that. That it, it's <laughs> weird. Avoiding the like when board. when you go back, it's, it's fine. preposterous. Oh. It's when you go to the next page. I just want you to go to the future. Yeah, it doesn't want you to go to your next like page. Yeah, I get you. Go you. back, and it's quick. Yes, it's interesting. China Lake 100 says, "Can you guys explain the ball sack sound bites and their origin? I'm wondering where all this meme makes me irritate. Absolutely not. You'll never get an explanation. You're never gonna that. know. No, <laughs> we are the only people that know. Yeah, and it's Peter Ballsack. You know, he knows that, but he's, he's asking like, where's the clips from? And you won't know. No, you're yeah. not gonna know. Yeah, Quality it's a secret. Over. It's a secret. And we own the original tape. We do. Yeah, on the cutting room floor, the Hollywood tape. Yeah, it's insane. What yeah. a weird thing to own." Yeah, we just found it on eBay. Yeah. <laughs> cool, 1203, will this clothing law go get to the point where everyone are required to wear traditional Chinese outfits? Probably not. Hey, listen. That's not. Dude, don't don't discount that. Yeah. Don't just dis- remember what China looked like in the 80s. Yeah. Literally wearing Mao yeah. suits. Yeah. You every look at North Korea. Yeah. What do they wear? They all wear it's like a uniform. Well, no, they they can wear other clothes. Yeah, but the majority you always see yeah, just like, like a work, freaking brown, stupid, yeah. mal looking uniform. Yeah, because they're at work all the yeah, time. Yeah, exactly. Just in the eighties, you see footage from the eighties. Yeah, it was starting to liberalize, but just before then, everyone's walking around that stupid blue or yeah, whatever mm. mal freaking uniform with a hat and all that. You know, it's true. And that some grandpas still wear that shit today. But yeah, well, to, to be reasonable, probably not to that extent. I I get it, yeah. but don't discount it. Yeah, for it sure. can happen. It can. It, it can. can happen that they're like anything Western is just not okay. Yeah, and you know you must wear what's you know whatever, acceptable. Yeah. yeah, and it'll become very boring. Yeah, even the eighties footage that you see where they're wearing like white shirts and pants. It's just uniform, basically. uniform, yeah. and let's hope it never gets to that because China mm. really opened up and became very vibrant and interesting. Yeah, and I just hope it doesn't, you know, regress yeah. back into that. But there is a possibility. The government has the power. Yeah, you just cannot discount it, is what I'm saying. Yeah, I'm not saying it'll happen, but it, you can't discount it. Grass puddle. Two questions. I doubt there's a lot of video. So on Monday, will you bring a? Oh, there's video. There's a lot of video. Oh, there is. So will you bring in a Ken and Barbie to reenact the events? No need. I have plenty of material. Mm. Plenty. I, Good. I, I documented it. And are you ready for some football? I freaking am so super pumped. Thank you for asking. Dude, it's so frustrating. Like, everything that I own is like, don't forget you can watch the football. And it's like bombarding me. I'm getting like emergency text messages as if it's from the government telling me the NFL, this and that. I'm like, shut up. I don't care. Nice. I actually don't care. I'm yeah, not going to watch it. I, I don't am. care. I wish it's I like, got stop. Those it's like everything, like YouTube and mm-hmm. whatever. I don't even subscribe to Hulu or anything, but I'm getting like this stuff popping up everywhere. Like, watch the game. Most popular like, sport in America. I know, but I'm Most just like... Most Americans watch it. They do, but I'm yeah. just like, no. Right. I'd rather like play You're, Baldur's Gate 3 or something. 
See, nerd. It's way better. I love Ball to Skate 3, <laughs> but I love football too. I know. You can, you, like you can, you can like it, but it's man. So, it's so 90s cringe to think that you can't like both. Oh, I like games, so I don't like sports. No, I you know I li- I mean? I, I'm not saying people can't like yeah, it. I, I just it. hate yeah. this propaganda. I get, it's, it's like it's, it's advertising. Like, it's like watch the game, yeah. and everyone's like watch the, and everyone you talk to is like watch the game. Everyone's well, you want to watch the game? I'm watch like, game. it's like no, I refuse. The more you try yeah. to like, you know, put force me to watch this <laughs> damn game. Time to cancel Winston he hates football. <laughs> you know, you the have more a majority American. It doesn't audience matter. Here. The more people try to force me to watch it, the less likely I am. There to. are very few people in america that hate the game i don't hate it oh okay i never said i hated it no i just don't want to watch it gotcha i'm not interested doesn't mean that everyone's trying to cancel you it means it doesn't mean i don't like it it's just like god stop please all right well yeah i'm not telling you to watch anything yeah that's good i'm glad everybody who wants to watch it like have fun yeah and i'm glad you enjoy it you must go enjoy the hell out of it yeah go watch the game i watch the game give you something to talk about you know yeah Let's give him something to talk him. Why am I singing that? <laughs> I, don't I don't know. know. Ky- Kylina AG, uh, an NPC milk. Bake my buns and take me out on the Ferris wheel. <laughs> oh, what the hell? <laughs> I guess I can go back uh, for that one because it's not that bad. Oh, what the hell? <laughs> You're the one that called me. Why are you saying, what the hell? You made me an NPC. <laughs> <laughs> That's your invention. Yeah, yeah. Save it for Monday. Save it for yeah, Monday. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, fa- fan Gazal. No, it's not real. FX, rumor has it that the CCP is at least partially responsible for uh, severity of Hong Kong flooding. Yes. Yes, it is true. Uh, we, they, they opened the floodgates from Shenzhen. Yeah. They sealed brick roads and glue during the 2019 protests and neglected the infrastructure investments. Oh, interesting about That's that. That's another yeah. piece of the puzzle, yes. Yeah. I was reading into that. Uh, Black Halo 6, I really got a hand at the artists in the competition. Some are even hand-drawn. They really knuckled down and hand-delivered absolute gold. Yes. Yeah. The, the Some art of it's we've amazing. blown away with. Yeah. Yeah. We'll show you guys. Yeah, you guys are going to vote on the winners. Yeah, we'll have a whole segment when, when it's time. Mm. Pleb says, uh, C-Milk, you should check out that documentary where British people try to be Victorian era bakers. Shut up! <laughs> Leave me alone! Yeah, yeah, it's pretty funny. <laughs> hey, bro, Keen. Amazing show as usual, Chad. Thank Hot you. takes. Stinky Tofu Rocks. I like it. Uh, he doesn't like it. I no. like it. No, can no, I get no. a premium studio quality limited edition on demand gourmet Port of Dandong? Oh, you certainly can because I'm just going to go back to it. <sighs> Going back, going back is easy going forward no dice yeah Manesh Mins any thoughts on Xi Jinping not attending the G20 summit happening in India saw a lot of fan fiction about this I was reading this article <laughs> it was actually in a very um, reputable source it was a reputable source but I believe it was an opinion article right but it's almost like talking like the fact that he's not in the G20 means that the CCP is like like reprimanding him and potentially will overthrow him and stuff and it's like you can't you you don't know that no. you know no one knows that right mm. like no one know you can speculate all you want but you can't that can't be like doctrine it's not canon no he just doesn't feel like going you know he's too too busy or something yeah he's else. too busy with pork pork yeah <laughs> pork stocks have yeah gone exactly down. it's like dude he doesn't <laughs> want to have to go all the way there they probably just serve some like fancy caviar yeah. or something he's like nah yeah he i just want pork after he had that caviar pancake with, with lenient yeah. and with putin <laughs> yeah. and it was like slathered in like pounds of caviar and he like that was another honest reaction yeah yeah he looked like, like he's gonna yeah puke. he's gonna puke. i would too <laughs> it's like caviar on a pancake sounds awful to me i don't I, like i caviar. like blinis but like yeah. i'm not a huge caviar guy yeah that yeah. just looked terrible to me it was too much and whatever it was too much caviar. <laughs> it must just taste right. like salt or something. It's you know what I mean? Salt. salt of the sea. Salt of the sea. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, thanks. That's a good question, though. Um, mm-hmm. And yeah, who knows what it means? Honestly, who knows at this point? Yeah. You know, it's just political power play. It's nonsense. Yeah. Quality twelve oh three. Uh, thank you very much. Wumble three. Can we please get a what's up, Beijing? Do we have that anymore? No, no. Sorry, uh, it's been replaced. I'll give you a CPCC. CPPCC. CPPCC. A beard guy. Everywhere. Oh yeah, we, we've got him? a whole thing. Remember, I got a whole new, a whole new thing that we're going to introduce next week, which oh. is amazing. Oh, one thing I got to tease for Monday. Yeah, you guys remember the Belt and Road Initiative bedtime stories guy, mm-hmm. the guy with like the bowl cut, the bowl cut, and yeah. tells his daughter stories about Xi Jinping, and then he like calls up like his fifty-six-year-old yeah. anal- analysis <laughs> friend. He's like, "Hey, Lily, <laughs> do you want to hear about like the?" future developments of economic ties and this and that she's like okay dad and she's like 
six years old yeah. or something and he calls this old guy up who's like we're gonna talk about the economic this and that and she's like showing his Sit, little daughter like as she's like sitting there like this like watch the it's watch like, the oh video. wow that is so interesting so china is going to overtake this market i'm so <laughs> interested in this uh, oh it was the worst like horrible thing this like child exploitation if you guys remember yeah. that episode i mean mm. it, that even made we censored the kid out <laughs> yeah like, we, it was so much we effort. did we actually yeah. censored her out because we're like this is just even awful. though it was on public yeah. TV, it's like still out China, there yeah. in Chinese where we were from. like, this is so bad to do mm. this to your kid. Anyway, yeah. we covered this and we made fun of certain attributes of it. You remember he comes to while she's lying in bed, is like he's like, I'm gonna tell you a bedtime story Jinping. talking about Xi Jinping's Belt and Road Initiative. Oh my word, it's like the stupidest idea ever. It was actually made me sick. It's nauseating. It's, it was sickening. Anyway, oh, imagine reading that to your daughter. Our analysis of it had a big change on him. Yes. And we want to show you on Monday. Yeah. Are we going to show it on Monday? Yeah, we can show it's it on Monday. So He's actually so changed his look because we we, we <laughs> like dismantled him it. too much. You won't even recognize him. No, no. It's amazing. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We have a big effect on propaganda. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Hazy, uh, do puts cost same as shares? Do what? Puts? What's a put? I have no idea. <clears throat> I'm not sure what that means, Hazy. I'm sorry. Mm. Uh, Koala 1203. Can I get a Homer's Iliad, Tolstoy's War and Peace, Metal Gear Solid 4 cut, cut scene of China show soundbite? Which one? Probably the longest one you got. I'll just give you stuff. Uh, <clears throat> Jay Gernt. After watching so many vids, <clears throat> excuse me, it's good to catch my first live. Thank you for all you do. Oh, thank you for joining <clears throat> us live. That's awesome. I probably got freaking COVID. George Hazard, Zhang Hutching tweeted another train video. He did. And yes. I actually, I, I yes. took the, the screenshot in the video. It's a good it's one. It's another one. It's almost yeah. the same, though. This is the original. Without Thomas, obviously. Yeah, but he, he created another one where he's like, the five trains at once or something, and he used the same kind of fake Photoshop thing. Nice. Yeah, it's nice. ridiculous. PB says, do you think she has body doubles? Uh, would you Or would you like to... Or would he see his own lookalikes as a threat? Is there a secret campaign to arrest those that resemble him? The, people do no get idea. canceled for looking like him. Mm -hmm. There was a guy, a famous musician, that was canceled because yes. he looked like him. Yeah, I remember. It was a count yeah. band. Yeah, he got like a because they were saying that he was trying to impersonate Xi Jinping. He just, wasn't. He just looked like him. Yeah, it's yeah. not his fault he was born yeah. porkish, you know? Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah exactly. <laughs> Por part of the pork clan. Yeah, it's not his fault. No. It's your family ties, yeah. you know? Anyway, uh, the infamous lunchbox says pen test is short for penetration testing. All right. All right. Hear me out for a second. <laughs> yeah. I understand what you're saying now. Mm -hmm. But when you said bedroom pen testing, that sounded dirty. Then your retort is, no, it's not dirty. It's called penetration testing. <laughs> okay. Let's... Yeah, let's rewind move on. here. Yeah, uh, i.e., hacking hardware locations. So you know, yeah. that's that's great. That's yeah. cool that you do that though. Black Halo Six says, mm -hmm. do you think? that to get a grip on the deflation, they might give handouts of cash to civ civilian population, or would they not be able to keep uh, the corruption under the third thumb to provide slight, to prevent sleight of hand thefts? They'd have to roll. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that would be insane. Imagine that, the corruption involved with that. I mean, they already do in a way. They like offer these incentives like, hey, if you buy an apartment, we'll pay the whole year of mortgage for yeah, free. Yeah, but that's not a national thing. Imagine a national mm. initiative to hand out a fixed amount of money to everyone in the country like America did during COVID. Can you imagine the absolute effery yeah. remember they happen? do that in hong kong not in mainland no, china. not in mainland china but i remember they do it in hong kong yeah not in mainland china it would be a mess yeah. it's like every year they'll give like a certain stimulus or whatever yeah it yeah. would be a disaster it would be china. a disaster yeah. uh andreas matiola says pen tester tries to bypass security see how deep it can be penetrated both social engineering and cyber security nice yeah that's cool mr mechasexual says can i get a happy birthday it's mine tomorrow happy birthday hey, mr. happy mr. birthday mate uh, been watching for a year now. Also, can I have a YF-19 toy? <laughs> YF-19 is a, like a plane. Mm. Yeah. I don't have one to give you. I'm sorry. I mean, that'd be awesome if you could get one. That's yeah. really cool. Um, but happy birthday. Yes, absolutely. Boycott China says sports ball is for lamos. Uncancel Winston. <laughs> 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 I rode moose. Stay strong, Winston. <laughs> I find NFL ha hand egg exceedingly boring to watch. What hand egg? <laughs> 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 Not watching NFL is great. Oh, it is, yeah. You know, here's the thing. Um, great. I cannot explain to you, and I'm not trying to be like any any different, but you know, there's certain things that you just like or you don't like. I agree. When I was a kid. 
you know, South Africa is a very sports orientated uh, place. Okay, everybody loves sports there. It's the main thing. And I remember it was like just after Christmas, and I'd just gotten a radio control car, but like one of those ones with the wire still attached. No. It's not even radio controlled. It's you know, just I hated remote those. control. Yeah. So I'd just gotten this thing, okay, and my friend, my best friend at the time, had also gotten one. We got the same one. So I went to his house so we could play these remote control cars. Adam must have been like six, right? And I get there, and their whole family is watching a freaking tennis game, including my best friend who's six. Yeah, this is boring. And the thing is, like, I'm like, let's go play with our remote control cars. You're a six-year-old boy. That is your priority, but not for my friend, no. He had to sit and watch this pathetic clay court <laughs> off-brand Wimbledon bullshit match with his parents until it was over and by the time it was over I had to go home nice. and I'm like screw sports what is <laughs> wrong with my you. friend <laughs> who's gonna you. prioritize watching some <laughs> lame tennis match right. we're six years old over playing with a remote control car I will tell you this I would have played remote control cars yeah. over watching any of that crap it's like what the hell yeah. and then the, the more I grew up the more it just turned out that like sport was such a priority for people yeah. in, in South sure. Africa like more than anything else and sure. it's boring you know it's very boring and takes up a lot of time. I get it if you're into it and you enjoy mm -hmm. it. That's fine. But especially if you're just passively watching it, not actually participating, I find like, okay, like it's fine. But why is, a, why is watching a game on a TV, which you can rewind and tape it and watch it later, why does that prioritize hanging out with your friends, doing something cool, going out? You know what I mean? Usually people do those things with their friends. I get it. Yeah. But if there's something more cool to do or fun right. to do. Like, but you're, I mean, you're arguing against the majority of I know, get it. But, population. you know, you got to understand why. And I've, yeah, yeah. I've never found it fascinating sure. to watch other people play sports. There's a lot to sports. it. There's a lot to it, though. Yeah, I know. And strategy and stuff. You know? Yeah, I, it's good. And it's, the people would say the same thing about what we're into. You know, the other no, thing. No, abs abs I get it. I get yeah. it. I'm just saying, like, there are different perspectives. Yeah, if you want to sure. watch a couple of millionaires running around, like, chasing a bag of wind or whatever, that's up to you, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. It's up to the majority of people. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's like, go for it. <laughs> go for it. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, David Pay says, so no football fantasy, Serpent today? Nope. <laughs> fantasy football. Yeah. Uh, uh, and you people used to play fantasy football and backgammon in China, some foreigners. Backgammon? Yeah, they used to get together and play backgammon and fantasy football. Oh, I understand the fantasy football. Why backgammon? I don't. You know, it's that weird thing that's I, got like these. I don't even know how it I works. Hate, I hate board games. <laughs> I hate it's board like, games. Like it seemed weird, like a weird Back choice. Backgammon. Yeah, seemed like a very weird choice. It's such board a game. leather, lazy boy. <laughs> like, you know, it's got the little. Like the trim on it, and an old man is sitting <laughs> on it with a pipe. Dots, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Y'all got me into the uh, Kawasaki Seven uh, Z Six Fifty RS. Fun, uh, nice. Ever look at uh, Western ex military training PLA forces Frontier Service Group for a good example? Uh, we're active in Xinjiang, run mm -hmm. by former Blackwater mercenary chief. Yeah, look, there's been a lot of that yeah. in, in Australia. They actually arrested a guy who was training them, and yeah. they're pilots and so on. Yeah, glad you're riding though. Yeah, uh, Koala twelve oh three has the CCB redirected the floods of Hong Kong as a punishment for twenty nineteen protests. Either way, it's very cruel of them. It could be, could have a little little thing to do. It's that also, to save their own ass. it's also like, hey, listen, you saw how Law who was underwater yeah. like that. The majority of Shenzhen is flat, so yes. you know you're going to get a lot of that, uh, you know, like underwater stuff. They have to get rid of the floodwaters. Yeah. yeah, you know. Uh, oh yeah, says a baker's dozen bucks for your next beer coffee. Thank you very much. <laughs> beer coffee. <laughs> Dan oh. Patton, thank you very much. Uh, Foo Fighter, thank you very much. Thank you, Tree, for thank you, gentlemen. Please consider sh sharing their videos and channels with your friends. Have an awesome weekend. Thank you very much, thank Tree. Thank you. Yeah, please, guys, it. please uh, share us out if you can. That'd be lovely. Uh, Jay. And Manish says, uh, do you think CCP someday will implode one day by itself, or do Chinese people uh, have to revolt? They would have to revolt, and it probably won't go no, anywhere. No, it's, it's just unfortunate, you know. Yeah. There's nothing that can be we done. Can, we can safeguard the rest of the world against mm -hmm. its influence by not capitulating to their demands. And, you know, the thing is, um, the, the Chinese government can change for the better if it's coerced, mm. if it's forced. Yes. I mean... Look, I made that video about the, the fields of those cars like rotting, the EV yeah. cars rotting, and they were just still rotting. They would have continued to rot. Nobody would have said anything no. about it. But because my video got traction, got into the press, big news outlets started to question like the Hangzhou government in particular, the, where there's tons of these like fields of rotting cars. And now they're like, oh, yeah, I guess we'll try clean them up. You know, the thing is, it's to make them lose face, to yeah. actually point out, hey, you can't be doing this kind of stuff. And then they're kind of forced into a corner where mm. they have to change for the better. And I think yeah. that's the best way to approach the CCP is just 
call them out. Stop them from taking advantage of the world and destroying the environment, you know, and sure. stuff. And then they'll change. As, uh, Trek Media only says, I totally agree. As a kid, a Sundays were the worst. No good cartoons and boring sports. <laughs> yeah, dude, what the hell? Boycott China says, if we were paid engineers and physicists the way we pay sports ballers, we'd be mining asteroids for now for a cleaner Earth, no? That's capitalism, buddy. That's how <laughs> things work. Yeah, I know, sports defender over here, but I get it. No, if you want to live in the Soviet Union where the market doesn't demand things and the government dictates salary, that's fine. Enjoy your life. Yeah, exactly. It'll be great. Sports is great if you enjoy it. Yeah. Nothing wrong with it, but at the same time, like, hey, man. I'm if you, like both. If you just don't enjoy it, it's, a, it's an annoying thing. I'm a very yeah. understanding person. Yeah, I don't yeah. like basketball. Yeah. I don't I don't like to watch basketball. I like yeah. to play basketball. I don't like to watch basketball, right. but I don't judge people that watch NBA. Yeah. What is that sport? Um, curling or whatever? I don't like curling, yeah. but I wouldn't judge someone for enjoying it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah me neither. It's kind of a bizarre sport. <laughs> it's really, you're sweet. It's, you're basically an ice janitor, <laughs> yes, dude. <laughs> you're a freaking ice janitor. Sweeping the ice, you know what I'm saying? Uh, last well, one's uh, yeah. Ruby R. Agagon. Keep up the good work. Keep up fighting the good fight. Have a corpo meeting. Go Team Pig. And good ear train frappe. <laughs> uh, for my bro, please. Irritate at the mission of Pig Bay. Fighter, we are playing Baldur's Gate 3. Yes, absolutely we are. It's... um. We're progressing slowly because we only We're put like in a, yeah, we put in like a lunch break hour every day or something. Not every day. No, well, when, when, yeah, no, you're yeah. wrong. I, I'm wrong. When we can. Yes. i tell you what, though, if we could just sit down and oh, do it, we'd be, we would have finished it oh, multiple man. times already. I would <laughs> look like a neckbeard in my mom's basement. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. All right, guys. Is that it? Yeah. We'll catch you on uh, Monday. Tomorrow for, for my video. Okay. Yes. I'm doing got a... China sex army. Mm -hmm. You're that probably going to well. want to see that. Yeah. It's yeah. funny. Well, it's not funny. It's no. insidious. Yeah. It's interesting. Yeah. Thank you very much, guys, for joining us for this important conversation that we have every week. Uh, it's your viewership and your support that keeps this going. So thank you very much. Hope you have a fantastic weekend, whatever you do. Uh, stay awesome. And I'm not going to cut myself off. So let's try. Five, four, three, two.